Bespoke Radio for the Masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network and KGRA, the Global Radio Alliance. I need your help to get to the year 1985. Listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Good evening. Fade to Black. Bespoke Radio. For the masses. Uh, yeah. How you doing today? It's Wednesday, November 24th, 2021. Three hundred and twenty-seven days into the new year, only thirty-eight days left. We are live from a bunker somewhere in the middle of nowhere. But it is beautiful. I would like to welcome everybody listening all around the world, all across the United States. Hither and thither, to and fro, back and forth, up and down, east and west, north and south, far and near. This is Fade to Black for KJCR, the Game Changer and UnX Networks. I am your host, Jimmy Church. All right, how you doing? Uh, it's the night before Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I'll see you guys tomorrow night right here. I'm going to do a very special fader night with all of you. It's going to be cool. All right, so after dinner, after dinner, do what I'm doing. After dinner, meet me right here. And that's what we're going to do. But tonight, Dave Schrader. Yeah. Stopping by for Schrader night. Yeah. The voice. <laughs> the voice. Darkness Dave. It's the night before Thanksgiving. I'm in a great mood. And uh, I got uh, I got a diploma today. I just want to let you guys know about that. I'm very honored and, and privileged. Uh, the cap and gown. And, and here it is. Right here. There it is. PhD in ufology keychain. That's what I'm talking about. Right there. That's official. That is official. <laughs> Somebody sent that to me. And uh, they know who they are. That's pretty cool. I mean, I mean, really, they'll give one of these to anybody. <laughs> There you go. It's the night before Thanksgiving, and uh, I hope all of you are ready. Probably most of you are already cooking, and the house smells great. It's that it's the perfect holiday. So there you go. Follow me on Twitter at J Church Radio. And I left the studio door open, and I'm going to leave it open until the break. But I can hear the echo. You know, permeating, just, just, <laughs> if I whisper, then it won't go out the door and come back in. Maybe I should do the show like Dave Schrader does, you know, that Schrader voice of his. I could, but I'm not. Let's get to the breaking news. Oh, follow me on Twitter at jchurchradio. Hashtag F2B. On Twitter is The Sandbox. Yeah, come and hang out with us over there. That's in real time with me during the show. And uh, you can see all of the gifts that everybody is posting, like Ken Priest. 
and and Ken is a 100% troublemaker, by the way. And um, I've officially hung out with Ken uh, for three or four days. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I'm alive to tell the tale, but it was dicey there for a minute. That 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 guy. Whoo, man, Tara, I dream of Jeannie. I dig it. I dig it. <laughs> you guys, I love the gifts. I love the gifts. What is this one from Olivia? Where is that from? The go-go scene. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and the gifts, and and I can't start the show without just strolling through the gifts there in the sandbox, and you need to check them out. They're really funny. Hashtag F2B. That's all you got to do right there on Twitter. All right. Uh, let's get to the breaking news. I announced uh, two nights ago and again last night, but this is a really big deal. The Observers is now available for rent on all streaming platforms. And the links are for uh, everything are down below and you can click on that. And and have you seen it yet? What did you think? It's pretty amazing. And I do want to hear from you. But uh, another announcement uh, today. In one week, our next film has its worldwide release. And that is Extraordinary, The Revelations. It has won four Best Documentary Awards out there on the festival circuit. It has 18 official selections in film festivals around the world. It premieres... This Tuesday on November 30th, 2021, the links to pre-order that are down below. And uh, I'm I'm just going to say this, you know, you get involved in a a film project, and in this case, uh, it was two, but they were staggered. And they were about a year apart, you know, from one film to the next and COVID and everything else, you know, all that stuff comes into play. And it just so happens that these two films are releasing and premiering in the same month. What are the odds of that happening? And uh, it's pretty cool. It's a weird feeling for me uh, to have one premiere last week and then one premiere next week. But that's what's going on. And Extraordinary, The Revelations, um, I narrate uh, in that film. I don't appear in it, but my voice is there. And uh, for me, it was a bucket list. I've always wanted to narrate a documentary, and I got to narrate a great documentary. So that premieres this Tuesday. Unbelievable. Right on Thanksgiving, too. So I have so much to be thankful for. I, it's uh, I'm grateful and thankful beyond measure. And uh, and then a week after that, I'm shooting the pilot for my new TV series. <sighs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Pretty, pretty insane way to uh, wrap up this year. So I am grateful and thankful. Let's get to the rest of the breaking news. The United States Department of Defense late yesterday after the show started said it will establish a new group to investigate reports on the presence of UFOs in restricted airspace. The new group, the Airborne Object Identification and Management Synchronization Group, will be overseen by the Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence, the Director of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and officials from the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. Deputy Secretary of Defense Kathleen Hicks said in a separate statement, the presence of unidentified aerial phenomenon in restricted airspace poses a potential safety of flight risk to air crews and raises potential national security concerns. The new group, which will succeed the U.S. Navy's Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force, otherwise known as the UAPTF. There is so much going on right now with uh, legislation, the creation of these groups. We have ASTRO. Um, I, I'm i trying to figure it all out. I did see Lou Elizondo's uh, tweets uh, today. 
and I spoke to Lou at length. Oh, man, was it yesterday or today? It was yesterday. I don't know if I talked to him today. Talked to him at length. And um, things are moving. Things are moving very, very, very fast. And this is what we ask for. So we've got to keep the pressure on. I'm still trying to make sense of it all. And and I read through Lou's uh, tweets. And I, I normally don't comment on news uh, because my opinion doesn't matter. But what I gathered through Lou's tweets is this. He's a lot smarter than I am. <laughs> That's, and the way that he laid it out, I was like, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. So we need to figure all of this out, and we will in the days, weeks, and months ahead. In another sign that the four horsemen are about to gallop through your town, some tropical bees have recently turned into vultures. That's right. Let that sink in. Some tropical bees have recently turned into vultures. All of this according to a new study. A U.S. scientific team traveled to Costa Rica and discovered a unique gut microbes allowing bees to digest dead animals' meat instead of flower nectar. They have been officially named vulture bees. According to the scientist, the unexpected change in the insect's food preferences might be explained by an intense competition for nectar. The researchers noted that although vulture bees can't sting, and that's the good news, sort of, listen to this, they are thoroughly unpleasant. Some of them produce blister-causing secretions that cause painful sores. However, these bees' honey is sweet and edible. One researcher using the word tasty. Vegans are going to freak out when they find out about this sweet raw meat honey, 100% organic, (laughs) at health food stores. Around the world, the four horsemen cometh. Germany announced that it will legalize the recreational use of cannabis. Marijuana, the Mary Jane, weed, pot, the sticky icky. The country's new coalition government announced everything as party leaders struck a power-sharing deal today. Right as Angela Merkel's 16-year reign ended. Wow. Let's get the show cracking. Happy birthday to today. Billy Connolly. Billy Connolly today is 79. His best movie. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it right now. Still crazy. The band Strange Fruit. Actor Colin Hanks. Son of another Hanks. Is 44. He's a good actor. Pete Best, the guy that quit the Beatles, is 80. Guitarist Chris Hayes today is 64. Huey Lewis in the news. And brother of Jonathan Hayes. Who is Jonathan Hayes, Jimmy? This... Is Jonathan Hayes, the painter of the flame guitar. How cool is that? It's a small world. It's a small world. Small world. Our dead guy's birthday today is Donald Duck Dunn. 1941 to 2012, died at the age of 70. Duck, a bass guitarist a session musician, a record producer, and a songwriter. He played bass with Booker T and the MGs, Green Onions. 
He was a session bassist for Stax Records. At Stax, Dunn played on thousands of records, including hits by Otis Redding, Sam and Dave, Rufus Thomas, Carla Thomas, William Bell, Eddie Floyd, Johnny Taylor, Albert King, Bill Withers, Elvis Presley, and many others. In 1992, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a member of Booker T and the MGs. He is ranked number 40 on Bass Player Magazine's list of the 100 greatest bass players of all time. But for me, it was his run with the Blues Brothers that sealed the deal. He famously played himself in the Blues Brothers film where he uttered the line, quote, we had a band powerful enough to turn goat piss into gasoline, end quote. On the morning of May 13, 2012, he died in style. He died in his sleep after finishing his fifth double show at the Blue Note nightclub in Tokyo with the one and only Steve Cropper the night before. On this day in history, 1971, hijacker and criminal mastermind D.B. Cooper parachutes out of a plane with 200,000 ducks and is never seen again. Fader fact, Brazil has the world's largest population of Japanese people outside of Japan. That is your Fader fact. River Moon Coffee. (laughs) I'm in a great mood. It's the night before Thanksgiving. And and I get to be on the radio with all of you, with Dave Schrader coming up. He's stopping by for Schrader night. Doesn't get any better than that. And then tomorrow is Thanksgiving. And after Thanksgiving dinner, I get to come into the studio and turn on the lights and then just hang out with you. It's an amazing night tonight. Uh, Dave is stopping by. He will be with us at the bottom of the hour. And, of course, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. RivermoonWellness.com. All right. Now. Time travel. One of my favorite subjects. And I remember a few years ago, there were a series of clips that showed up on YouTube of a guy saying that he traveled from the future and he was being chased. He was on a park bench in one of the videos in some windy weather. Anyway, you know, he's got like an iPad and he shows a picture up to the camera from a city in the future where he came from. And as he shows the picture, you know, the, 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 the cops from the future. You know, <laughs> and at that moment, the video feed gets cut off. Now, the the pick of the city looked a little hokey to me, but but that's not the point. The point is, what if it was real? I never totally dismiss this stuff. It happens all the time. You have to leave the door cracked open just a little bit, right? You, you have to. You just never know, especially with time travel. And uh, I was watching a clip today of Richard Dolan that I posted up on YouTube, and he, he he gives his little take on time travel. And it just got me thinking about time travel again. You know, and like this guy in the park bench, whatever happened to him, right? Never saw him again, and I've tried to find him. Maybe he got back to the future. I don't know, but but I follow all of the time travel news when it hits. Like the crazy story of Andrew Carlson. Andrew was arrested in March 2003 for SEC violations for making 126 high-risk stock trades and being successful on every one. As reported at the time, Carlson started with an initial investment of $800. It ended with over $350 million, which drew the attention of the SEC. Later reports said that after his arrest, he submitted a four-hour confession where he said he was a time traveler from 200 years in the future. 
He offered to tell investigators the whereabouts of Osama bin Laden and give them the cure for AIDS. All of this in return for lesser punishment and to be allowed to return to his time machine. Although he refused to tell investigators the location or the workings of the technology. A mysterious man shows up, posted his bail, and Carlson was scheduled for a court hearing, but was never seen again. Records show that he never existed. Now, the Carlson story originated as a fictional piece in the Weekly World News, a satirical newspaper, and was later repeated by Yahoo News, where its fictitious nature became less apparent. So you see, it was soon reported by other newspapers and magazines as fact. That's when I read it. This, in turn, drove the word of mouth, right? Inboxes, email, internet forums, everything leading to far more detailed descriptions of the events. And I followed all of it. And at the time, I took it all in. Hook, line, and sinker. Shortly after Carlson, we have Hacken Nordquist. Now, he pops into the community uh, with this video in 2006. And the video shows this, you know, he's from Sweden, a Swedish guy, you know, Hakan, claiming that he had been accidentally transported to 2046 when attempting to fix the sink in his kitchen. Video's incredible. It shows us his kitchen, takes us on a little tour. Right? He shows us the cabinet underneath uh, where he got sucked into some time tunnel vortex. All of it very compelling. It's a great video. At the end of the video, oh, 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 oh. He, he said that there in the future, he started hanging out with someone who ended up proving to Hakan that it was himself in the future at about 70 years old. And he said they hung out and had a great time. At the end of the video, there the two of them are, smiling, hugging, bro hugs, and then they show their tattoos, and they pull up their, and, and they both, and they have the same identical tattoo on each of their arms. The video tore up the net at the time. And everyone was talking about it, including me. Well, I found out later that the story was a marketing campaign promoting pension plans for some insurance company called AMF. I was totally heartbroken. That one I bought, and I took it all hook, line, and sinker. And then when you do this time travel stuff, you usually, when you're, when you're doing the deep dive like I do, you come across Rudolph Fence. The story of Rudolph Fence is an urban legend. Of, uh, it's been going around since like the early 1950s. And it's been repeated since as, uh, you know, this reproduction of facts and presented as evidence for the existence of time travel. Well, the legend is that in New York City in 1951, a man wearing 19th century clothes was hit by a car and killed. Now, in the investigation... It revealed that he disappeared without a trace in 1876. The items in his possession suggested that the man had traveled through time from 1876 to 1951 directly. Allegedly, the officials at the morgue searched his body and they found a copper token for beer worth five cents from a saloon that nobody had heard of. Uh, a bill for the care of a horse, right? And the washing of a carriage. It's some stable on Lexington Avenue that wasn't listed in the phone book. $70 in outdated banknotes from the 1870s. Business cards with his name on it and an address on Fifth Avenue. A letter sent to this address in June 1876 from Philadelphia. Right? It's crazy. The Fence Saga originated in a science fiction book of the 1950s. A Voice from the Gallery by Ralph M. Holland, which 
he copied the tale from I'm Scared, a short story by the legendary Jack Finney, from which the fence tale originated. But yeah, when I first read the accounts, again, I took it all hook, line, and sinker. But what do we do when an official government news agency releases stuff about time travel being real? That takes stuff to a new level too, right? And I follow all of it. Back when I started Fade to Black in 2013, the Iranian news agency, FARS, carried a story about a 27-year-old Iranian scientist who had invented a time machine that allowed people to see into the future. I read it myself. I bookmarked the site and the article. I went back the next day to read it, and and, uh, honestly... I was kind of believing what was there. It seemed authentic. I mean, it was an official FARS article on their government site. A few days later, I returned to the website, but the story was removed. It was replaced with an article quoting an Iranian government official saying that no such device had been registered. Now, could each one of these stories be real? I don't know. And the background details of each of these altered to cover up the reality of time travel. Again, I don't know. Why would everyone just disappear? The kid on the park bench, right? Gone. Carlson, gone. Right? (laughs) Fence, hit by a car. Killed. It's... it's, uh, and, and, And we can even go into the case of John Teeter. Right? Everyone just disappears. Why would Iran... Post an article from their own government news agency, FARS, only to pull it down a few days later. I mean, if it's fake, it's fake. Nobody cares, right? Just leave it up. But why pull it down, right? I'm just saying. This is Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. All of that today was caused by Richard Dolan and his little diatribe about time travel. And I just get sucked right back in. It's just like the Godfather. It's the night before Thanksgiving. Dave Schrader is here. I'm your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer and UnX Networks, Race Hobbs. This is Fade to Black. I'll be back with Dave right after this short break. Stay with us. This is Nicole Church, daughter of you-know-who, and you're listening to Fade to Black on JimmyChurchRadio.com and the Game Changer Network. You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. You're listening to Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Fade to Black will now pause for alien identification. The station that talks the net. Introducing the Game Changer Blend from River Moon Coffee that delivers a customized blend made specifically for the Fader Knots. If the game is rigged, change the game. It's a bolder cup with some bite. Game Changer is the coffee of choice for those that prefer an organic dark roast that is slightly lighter and milder but it's still dark. With wild notes of pecans and chocolate with a rich, balanced, full-bodied cup that is roasted to perfection for a great coffee to start your day as an after-dinner coffee or anywhere in between. Artisan, small batch, roasted to perfection. USDA certified organic, all River Moon coffee is freshly roasted and packaged in the USA. Just go to rivermooncoffee.com or click on the banners over on our site and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Rivermooncoffee.com. This is the only way forward. This is Fade to Black. Make contact. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can get our podcast for just $2 per month. 
All you have to do is click on the podcast banner over at jimmychurchradio.com. Hi, folks. It's trembling times and fear is pushing emotions, which in turn pushes health the wrong direction. Do you ever get an ache because life is uneasy? Try Life Change Tea at getthetea.com. Life Change Tea works on your digestive tract, helping to move food through quicker and comfortably so your health is spot on. Life Change Tea may not help with world issues, but it will help with your digestive issues. A glass a day helps keep the intruders away. So, change your life today. Log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. If your health game is off, get on by ordering Life Change Tea. Getthetea.com. And while you're on our site, look around at the great non-GMO organic supplements. And if you're a sales shopper, go to our specials page and see what's for you. I've been drinking the tea for 12 years and I'm sure glad for its health benefits. Again, that's getthetea.com. Getthetea.com. The tea that makes you go. The new KUNXDB, the UNX Network, bringing you the best in paranormal programming in premium, high-definition streaming audio and video. Log on to the network at unxnetwork.com and check out the growing lineup of programs, including Jimmy Church, Whitley Strieber, Micah Hanks, and many more. Sign up for the free UNX newsletter, follow the UNX blog, or pick up the latest edition of the UNX magazine. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. So check us out at unxnetwork.com. Tap the show page and the calendar so you never miss your favorite live shows and podcasts. We are your portal for all things paranormal. The X, explaining the unexplained. Nine out of ten geneticists agree. Fade to black is not your father's radio show on the Game Changer Radio Network. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Matthew, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Dave Schrader. It's Schrader night. <laughs> oh, man. And uh, I, I just popped into the chat room and said, Dave's here. I can take the night off. And uh, Dave can take some phone calls. And uh, I'm intimidated. Dave Schrader. And, and here's the deal. Um... He has been hosting the long-running paranormal podcast, Darkness Radio, uh, for like 65 years. And it was his birthday the other day, too. And he says he's 29, so I don't understand all of that. He's done multiple seasons of The Holzer Files over on the Travel Channel. Um, he is His life has been nothing but paranormal, ghostly visitations. Uh, of course, he covers Bigfoot and, and true crime, UFOs paranormal the supernatural all of that stuff and he does it with style and uh this friday he's featured in discovery channel's new shock doc demon in the white house now the the title of this is a little misleading because i don't do politics on this show and uh, you can jump into it any way you want but uh it's this friday november 26th and uh we're going to talk about that tonight and a host of other things because dave is here and it's host to host and and I love it when he stops by, and I want to welcome back to Fade to Black the one and only Dave Schrader. Dave, good evening, young man. 29. Hey. 29. Yeah. I wish. And, and, and uh, I'm going to tell everybody what happened. Um, so I find this picture of Dave on the net, <laughs> and I said, <laughs> man, he looks good. And I used it, and uh, and I sent it to Dave. He writes me back, dude, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's like 15 years old. I think that's what you said, 15 years, right? It was actually the photograph taken from our local newspaper when we launched Darkness Radio. It was me leaning against a tree outside my home. Right. And I just thought it was funny that of the thousands of pictures that appear online of me, you chose the 
single oldest photograph <laughs> that exists, which is, I guess, good because you don't realize much of a change other than a little bit more frosting on the, the tips of my goatee at this it, point. It was so funny. I was like, Dave looks great. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah. And uh, so funny. And uh, hey, man, how you doing? I'm doing well, buddy. As you said, just celebrated my birthday at the beginning of the week, 54 years old. Wow. I started Darkness Radio when I was 38. And, uh, you know, 16 years on the air, man. We've been having a great time and uh, lots of changes coming in my future here. I just got done filming a new series. Uh, I'm not allowed to say any other information other than that it should be out early 2022. Okay, That's it. Uh, you know what? We're all in the same boat. It, it, mm -hmm. You know, I start filming my new thing uh, in two weeks. I want to sing. I want to sing like a bird, but I can't. You right. know, and it's just the way it is. Um, I'm, uh, before we move forward, what is mm -hmm. that shirt? What What's on your shirt? Oh, it's uh, it, it's, it's Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. That's what I thought. That is a great shirt, man. Yeah, I just I just found it. I think at Walmart the other day for eight bucks, and I'm like, that's a great one. So you, you know what? Check this out. I did the same thing last week at Walmart. Okay, I'll wear it tomorrow on Fade to Black. I'm I'm walking through Walmart. Yes, I I, <laughs> I like Walmart, and uh, and I was there, I was buying lampshades. Right. Okay. So. Uh, got the lampshades in my cart, and I'm pushing, and and I'm wa and I see out of the corner of my eye the Van Halen logo, and it, and I just what, and uh, you know, it's one of those things. Yeah, I it was like a 1981 Van Halen T-shirt. I think I saw the same one. It was, and, and it was a concert shirt, Van Halen. Yeah. And I was like, man, I'm buying that. <laughs> I threw that thing in the cart. I bought a Van Halen concert T-shirt from 1981 at Walmart and was happy. I was just driving What's, home, and I was like, man, I got the coolest shirt ever from Walmart. Right. Well, I love that Walmart and Target carry these throwback concert tees that if you go on eBay and look at the original throwback concert tees, some people are selling them for two to 300 bucks. They're the original shirt, but I can go for 888 and get it from uh, Target and Walmart. Yeah, That's it, my my way. When When you're... When your parents, like us, we shop for the bargains. <laughs> That's right. That's it. That's it. Now, speaking of that, it's uh, Thanksgiving Eve. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got uh, 20 kids and grandkids. Uh, you've got your wife. I, uh, I'm imagining a, a pretty cool Thanksgiving dinner. What are you guys going to do tomorrow? It's a very shrady Thanksgiving. That's what I call it. Uh, yeah, I like to play the puns on my, on my name. Uh, you know, I told all the listeners to tune in and be my Schrader knots for tonight on Schrade to Black. <laughs> so I figure we'll keep this, uh, this pun, uh, puntastic run going. Uh, tomorrow's just a fun family day. We, uh, we just purchased, speaking of Walmart and Target, I just purchased a 75 inch screen, high definition, 4k Roku TV from Target for like 500 bucks. Right. So tomorrow I'm watching football in style, brother. Yep. Uh, and uh, we're just having some of the kids are over. A couple of my grandkids are over. We're just going to have a nice little family day of sitting around watching football and and uh, staying out of my wife's way while she cooks dinner. Now, do you do all the normal stuff? Uh, you know, uh, on the table. Yeah, we got Greco Roman wrestling in the living room with my children to remain superior to them. Let them know who's really in charge. Uh, and I've got tasers and mace. Should I start to lose? I'm talking about food. So. Oh. Oh, uh, yeah, we've got turkey, we've got some sweet taters, we've got your green bean casseroles, oh. some deviled ha uh, eggs. Yeah. So, yeah, we've got the, the normal spread. Do you do, um, I, I just want to live vicariously through you for a minute, <laughs> but but this is, uh, this is what I do, and I, I just mm -hmm. want to know if this is normal. Uh, I get my plate together, but I yes. cover everything with gravy. Everything. What I actually do, Jimmy, is I throw some mashed potatoes in the center of my plate, right. and I build from there. Right. And I just throw some turkey, some cranberry sauce, some sweet potatoes, and then I pour the gravy over it, and I just eat one giant. It's like a giant pot pie. That's exactly what I do. That it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Either, it's a it's a show host thing. I think. <laughs> either we're both completely strange, or we've got a couple hundred thousand people right now going. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. That's what I do. Although you've got those people that have to compartmentalize their food and they can't touch on their plate or right. they lose their mind. Right. That doesn't so work. So we just on... created nightmares for them. Yeah, that doesn't work on Thanksgiving. 
I, no. It just doesn't work. Uh, one last thing. Uh, you mm-hmm. mentioned uh, uh, green bean casserole, one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Just tell me you do the, the, the French onion crinkles on the top. Uh, of course. Oh, man. Well, I don't. My wife, she makes the, she just wants me, her her Thanksgiving and Christmas gift is for me to stay the hell out of their way when they're cooking. So I do that. I love her and let her handle the, the heavy work while I sit and eat chips and drink screwball whiskey. That's my deal. You know, the, the fascinating thing for me, um, and this started at a very young age, but I really appreciate it now. And that is, that is cranberry sauce. How mm-hmm. how that magical combination of cranberry sauce, gravy, mashed potatoes, and stuffing, and turkey goes together like it does. That's a gift from God. That's not an accident. It's black magic the way it all it tastes. Is. And let me ask you this, since you're putting me on the spot with Thanksgiving. All right, so are you the like that lumpy, uh, juicy version of cranberry sauce, or are you... The, you know, you pop open the can and pour it out in that one big slop of dog food, uh, gelled, congealed mess. Which right. one do you go with? I prefer the gelled, congealed, uh, smooth. I'm giving you the clock. Yeah, I do. I do. I do. And it, you know what? I like to slice it. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. We all do. Slice My kids all love it. So it's, yeah, the, the canned, I don't know what's in it, but it's that is proof that God loves us. Oh, that and the McRib sandwich. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw your post about that, by the way. <laughs> I saw your post. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Dave Schrader uh, stalker, and, and I have been for a long time. Uh, do, you have, do you have stalkers? Uh, you know... I, I've had a couple through the years. Nobody, thankfully, that I'm aware of that was like creepy wanting to wear my skin that I'm aware of. Um, you know, I've had a few that have stepped over the line. As a matter of fact, it's funny. I, I got, I appreciate all the messages I get on my birthday. But as you know, I get thousands on the Facebook page, emails, uh, you know, uh, Facebook Messenger, Twitter, all of this, there's just not enough time in a day to respond to all of them. And I just, as I'm fishing through today, trying to respond to some while I had a 10-minute break, I come upon one who wished me a happy birthday yesterday. So a day late, wished me a happy birthday. I hadn't responded by this morning, and they said, really, not even a thank you, and then blocked me. So it's like sometimes the crazy take themselves out of the loop, and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, I appreciate the love and, and attention. But, you know, if, if you, I can't answer. I, I, I honestly do not sit on social media 24-7 just answering every message. I do my best to answer where I can and move on when I can't. And I've only had a few encounters with with uh, um, stalkery people, but they've usually just been, you know, socially awkward, which I understand I'm painfully shy in person, one-on-one. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't expect that from hosts, hosts like us. But, you know, we can command a room of 10,000 people. We can talk to a universe of people through the radio shows that we do. But one-on-one, I'm very shy and and awkward. Uh, You know, if if I'm slipped into darkness day of mode, I can be a little bit uh, easier going. But uh, so I I understand some of the people that get up the nerve to come talk to somebody they they respect and admire. And I know how awkward that can be. And I try to make it as painless for both of us as I can. Um, So I really haven't had any any problems, Uh, you know, a couple over 16 years, so I I can't complain. Did you have a mentor uh, growing up to help you uh, on this journey of of celebrity that and the celebrity? It's weird. You know, you and I are not Will Smith. Right. Right. That's a whole we're not Kardashians. But in our sphere, you know, we have a certain degree of celebrity. And mm-hmm. you have to figure out a way to deal with that. Did you have somebody mentor you in the beginning on, on how to deal with these things? I, you know, I lucked out, Jimmy, where I grew up in Chicago in the heyday of magic of radio. Right. So I had Larry Lujak on WLS. I had Roy Leonard and Wally Phillips on WGN. I had Jonathan Brandmeier on The Loop. I had all these great characters that I'd listen to. And as a kid, I would call the stations. And sometimes, you know, I remember the day we got the phone call back. My mom answers the phone and she's like, hello. Uh, yeah. Who's this? Sure. Hold on. And then she goes, Dave, um, Larry Lujak's on the phone. You got to be kidding me. And I'm like, awesome. And I'm like 14. I come out and I'm like, hey, Mr. Lujak. And he's like, what's going on, Dave? And we had this talk 
for about 45 minutes. And he answered my questions about being a radio host and everything. And he took calls throughout his career with me. Um, Roy Leonard became a great mentor for me out of Chicago. He was truly one of the Kings yeah, of radio out there. And he used to invite me in as a teenager into studio to watch him do these. And I got to sit there while he interviewed Lily Tomlin and, and other great guests. And he just allowed me to be in that world. And then when I went off to college and started doing radio, I reached out to Roy Leonard who had retired by then. And, and Roy's like, well, you know what you should do. And he gave me some tips and hints. And so I had mentorship that way, but I've also just watched the way that the people I like handle fans and handle followers. I, I try to keep people away from calling themselves my fans. I say, let's just be friends. You know, right, I don't, right. If fans sounds weird to me. I, you know, I've just made a new friend and I like that. So that's the way I prefer it. But uh, Chris Jericho has been a great mentor in the fact that, you know, uh, engage the people, be, be kind to them, you know, show respect to them, uh, dress for success, be who you want to be seen as. And, and that's always kind of been, you know, I'm stepping up my game now. I'm trying to kind of look my part when I go out and not just walking around in a Van Halen t-shirt, but trying to, you know, look like I belong, uh, as, as so many people would look up to as a speaker on the paranormal and, you know, doing certain things, which I've, I've just started to change on, but I've had a lot of great mentors in the radio field and, and entertainment field that have given me little tips and hints along the way on the best way to, to treat people. And I have always allowed people into my studio that were fans of our show and radio, um, to come watch us do this when we were in an actual studio setting, you know, I've, I've allowed people to do whatever I could so that I can make them feel like a part of it, like Roy Leonard did for me. Mm -hmm. And I just know how important that was. And it's cool because, you know, like one of our radio guys now here in the Twin Cities, who's a big radio show host, uh, Eric Nordquist, he started off as Darkness Radio rookie. He was our, our intern. And now he's a big shot on radio here in the Twin Cities, working with Paul Allen, the voice of the Minnesota Vikings. So it's great to know that, you know, we were a stepping stone for some other people in the in the industry. It seems to me that you've made a pretty smooth transition uh, from uh, being behind the microphone to television. You have a, a, a great presence, and you're you're definitely very comfortable. Uh, did you have to work at it? I mean, it's it's pretty smooth. Well, you know, and I, I liken this to the fact that I've grown up under scrutiny with you know I've I've been a father since I was twenty. Um, so 34 years of having kids watch your every move and, you know, just trying to be a good example when you can and, and realizing, you know, when I, when I took over Holzer files, um, as the host, I was walking in the shadow of Dr. Hans Holzer, one of the preeminent paranormal investigators in the world. So I wanted to show the respect that following in his footsteps would come in. So it's just being cognizant of those thoughts and, and moving forward. So I've just tried to pay homage to the people that have been there. You know, it's when I, when I used to host coast to coast, you know, as one of the, the fill in hosts, people would say, you're so different here than you are on your own radio show. And I'm like, right, well, this is Shay Paul. You've just asked me to come in this weekend and made her D at Shay Paul. This isn't my restaurant. This is a classier environment. So I'm going to be different when I'm on coast to coast. I'm going to show that element. Now, if you want to hear me, my regular weird ways, tune into darkness radio, but I can, I can swing between the different type of shows I do and show respect to the home that I'm standing in. And uh, that's what I've always tried to do with, you know, with Coast and, and with uh, Darkness Radio or, or Tom Bernard's uh, podcast here in Minnesota that I fill in for as a fill-in host or wherever I'm asked to be a part of. Do you, did you find um, uh, when you're under FCC regulations – Mm -hmm. that the editing and the censoring that you have to do, you've got to be cognizant, you have to be conscious of the boundaries there. Mm -hmm. Did that did that limit sometimes uh, your your style and where you actually wanted to go in a conversation? Where over on darkness, right. you know, it's, it's you know, it, there, there's no boundaries. Well, when we were on darkness, we were on radio for eight, uh, nine of our, our 15 years. So we followed FCC regulations. I truly, I, I actually doing my darkness radio podcast, I've been freer and I've realized all it's done is let me talk potty mouth like I do in real life. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I've even realized I don't, I shouldn't be doing that. There's no need to do that. I want to keep the show family friendly. So I've already kind of thought to myself, 
in kind of reimagining, rebuilding my my career going forward, I think I'm going to get back into that vein as though I'm on regular radio because mm-hmm. I want everyone to feel a part of it. Well, and you can make some innuendo and you can be humorous without dropping the f bomb. On rare occasion, it's a fun little uh, element to grab the attention of the listener, but it shouldn't be a crutch. And I feel like I've kind of leaned into that crutch for the last four or five years. And you know, just simple things like that. I want to I want to shift up and change around a little. Well, and uh, and language is one thing. You know, like on this program, I'm not mm-hmm. limited by that, but I absolutely do not. Uh, use foul language and and mm-hmm. I ask the same of my guests even though I know I can do whatever I want but that right. that's not effective uh, to me personally mm-hmm. um, and now in my real life I swear like a sailor right but right. I come on the air and uh, I mean like the conversation you and I had earlier today that was a uh, that was profanity laced but but when you come on the air no, I, I, I don't want to right, do that. It should that. be a different level of but, respect but, to you and the audience. But I'm, I'm actually going in another direction with the okay. with the question, which is, like, if you're doing uh, a true crime show on your podcast, then mm-hmm. you're free to talk about the gore, you know, the scene, mm-hmm. the, the, you know, and where the, you have boundaries on on uh, terrestrial radio. And I try to even adhere to that on the true crime show because it's, you know, salaciousness sells, but it also can be a turnoff. And, you know, it's tough. I, I mean, I told the story a few years back on our show. We, we did a deep dive into the story that really brought me into why I'm fascinated with true crime. And it was the murder of my friend. Uh, she was my first girlfriend in high school. We remained friends off and on through the years. And this happened in uh, Chicago t- what is it, 26 years ago now, uh, about a week ago. She, they buried her on my birthday 26 years ago. Um, but uh, she was murdered along with two of her children, and her unborn baby was stolen from her womb. And some of it, you want the gore to see through so you can tell just how brutal these people were. Mm-hmm. And and then there's other elements and other episodes and shows when I don't, you know, and especially if it's about children, I'm very cautious with, you know, being a parent, I have trouble even watching TV shows and, and movies. If there's a murder of a child, it's, you know, even it, you know, and you think, Oh, it's just a horror movie, but it's when you're a parent, it puts you in a different mindset. Um, So I I try to be cognizant of that on the radio show and try to keep away from the gore and more with the story, you know, to get the concept. We don't, uh, you know, and sometimes the story is that these children were molested and this, this, and this happened. Well, I I make sure that people understand that there was sexual inappropriate activity that took place without getting graphic about what that inappropriate nature was. People can read enough about that in the books from the authors and and get into that. So we just try to touch on some of the aspects of of the story. But, you know, I mean, it's it's kind of in the moment. There have been times when, you know, we did a couple of episodes of True Crime Tuesday that affected me so much that I was, you know, choking back tears talking on the air about it. And it's, you know, I realize that I'm somebody who's an outsider who's not even tied to this case. So you want to show some, you want to show that kind of of compassion and empathy for the survivors and family members still out there that have to live with this every day. Are you surprised about, uh, we've got about two minutes uh, to the break, but um, mm-hmm. are you surprised about the the rise of true crime in in popular culture it's always kind of been there but right now mm-hmm. it's like the thing like the the new series murders in the building uh, you know for mm-hmm. instance um right. and and but you you were in front of this um are you surprised to <laughs> see the popularity yes and no you know what we started doing on darkness radio back in the day was, you know, I, I would realize there are some of these crimes that had a supernatural slant to them. Uh, the devil made me do it cases and and uh, vampire murders and, and Ouija board murders. And we did a couple of just regular episodes of Darkness Radio. And I realized that kind of hit further than even our, our paranormal aspects of the show. And, you know, when you're booking, I was booking shows five days a week for three hours. So I had to have sometimes two guests a night. Um and I just told Tim, I'm like, listen, Monday night, we're going to do supernatural news. Friday, we're going to do parish share where people can call in and share their stories. Tuesday, we're going to make just true crime. That only left me Wednesday and Thursday to really have to book guests for the paranormal and not oversaturate, not feel like I'm B 
beating a dead horse even for myself. Mm -hmm. And Tim at first didn't, he's like, dude, we're a paranormal show. I'm like, I know, but I think there's something here. And we just noticed that our true crime episodes quickly surpassed our paranormal episodes and downloads. Um, and people enjoyed it, but I think they got a kick out of the mixture. I try to, we take some dark stories and then the last half an hour of each show, we do dumb crimes, stupid criminals, where we read news stories from around the world of the last week of just idiocy of criminals and, and dumb things they've done, you know, uh, having a hamburger fight in a, in a Wendy's because they didn't get enough ketchup on their burger and just ridiculous stories. So you so, cover you cover the state of Florida then for right. a day. <laughs> oh, they're they're one of our biggest uh, <laughs> contributors. But yeah, I've watched it grow, and I I kind of sense that that was there. I it, the the whole Florida man thing. I got to take a break right here. But the whole Florida man thing, I thought was uh, for a minute uh, was kind of funny, haha. And then I just note I started to take note. Like every day, four or five articles that started off with a Florida man. Right? And I was like, right. no, this is reality. This is like really going down. Unbelievable. All right, let's take our break right here. This is Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. I guess tonight, the one and only Dave Schrader. Tonight, it's Schrader Night with the Schrader Knots. I love it. Uh, I told everybody, Dave, um, about your text to me at midnight. Go check out Twitter. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> We'll be right back. More Dave after this short break. Stay with us. This is Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Radio Network. Your one million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse, KUNX DB, BX. This is Billy Carson with ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Forbidden Knowledge TV has just reached its one year anniversary. That's right. One year, and as a show of appreciation, we are giving all new subscribers a free 30-day trial of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. That's 30 days to binge watch thousands of movies, documentaries, conferences, workshops, lectures, yoga classes, meditation courses, and so much more. So log on to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv from your computer or mobile device or get the Forbidden Knowledge TV app on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, iTunes, or Google Play today and use coupon code 30 days free. That's coupon code 30 days free on ForbiddenKnowledge.tv today. Because you never got that pony you always wanted. <laughs> Damn it. Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the Game Changer Network. Listen, I know and you know that you've always wanted your first crystal skull. Or maybe you're a collector just like me, but you just don't know where to go to find the real thing. Then I met Carolyn Ford over at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. Carolyn is the guardian of Einstein, one of the most respected ancient crystal skulls in the world. All of her unique skulls have been imprinted sitting with Einstein in his sacred lodge and are carved from the finest gemstone and materials. Imprinting is the process of receiving the ancient wisdom from the master skull or master computer. Einstein, the ancient crystal skull. To see Carolyn's current collection of crystal skulls, just visit her store at EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com or click on the banner over on our site. Don't forget to use the promo code JIMMY at checkout to receive 10% off of your order today. That's promo code JIMMY. Finding your first or next crystal skull is easy. Just visit EinsteinTheCrystalSkull.com. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. 
The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. Hello, I'm Katie and you're listening to my very man, Jimmy Church, on jimmychurchradio.com. Hi, this is Ray Sobs here repping the planet, and you're listening to my good friend, Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. This is Toby Kebble. You're listening to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Don't hurt me, Jimmy. I'm only little. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And this is Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. We're the Honey Brothers. Hey, I'm Adrian Grenier. And I'm Ari Gold. We're the Honey Brothers. And you're listening to Jimmy Church. The Revolution. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and you can become an official fade or not by just going to our membership section at jimmychurchradio.com. Hello, this is Serena Wright-Taylor from Conscious Life Expo, and you're listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church, who holds the Lucky Pony record for the best astrological chart since 1963. True story. This is Micah Hanks of the Graylian Report, and you're listening to Jimmy Church on Fade to Black. <laughs> Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Dave Schrader. And uh, Dave's featured in a documentary. It's coming out this Friday on Discovery+. Plus. Part of their Shock Docs series. And it is titled Demon in the White House. Now, uh, we're going to get into this in just a second, Dave. But the the title... Right, I don't do politics on the show, and I thought about this. For, I thought, oh man, here we go. The emails are going to come flooding in, um, but uh, it is it is it is not dealing with uh, any current or past presidents. This is a whole other subject altogether, isn't it? Well, we go back in time to deal with uh, um, Franklin Pierce and Lady Jane Pierce, also Abraham Lincoln, Mary Todd Lincoln. Those are the presidents we're referring to. Uh, and their work in the spiritualist realm and trying to conjure spirits of their of their children that had passed on. It has nothing to do with Biden or Trump. I know just saying those names, you and I are going to get hate mail, even though it was saying that it's not about them. But uh, it, it's an interesting deal. And I think the title's you know, attention grabbing, obviously people will tune in to see what it's about, but it's an interesting aspect to look at that, you know, the, the white house is known to be haunted so much so that butlers and ushers and, and former employees talk about it openly. Jeff Belanger did an entire book on it with the aid of the white house and was granted access to go in and talk to these people. And they were all very matter of fact about it. So, do, do, do the reference in, the references to ghosts at the White House do they predate Lincoln? It yes, yes. As a matter of fact, um, because President Franklin Pierce and First Lady Jane Pierce, um, First Lady Jane Pierce was not a fan of politics to begin with. She wasn't a fan of a lot that her husband was involved in, and he was kind of the dark horse candidate, and won, and during one of their whistle stop tours, uh, tr their train derailed and, you know, flipped over and they were shaken up. They were, they survived it and they found their son laying unconscious. Um, and his hat had fallen over his face. And when they went to rouse him and they pulled the cat back, they realized his entire head had been crushed in. And, and that and, was, that was Benjamin, right? Yes. Yes. yes right. 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 Uh, and it was devastating, devastating. They lost their 11 year old son. So, what a way to go into the White House. Well, you know, First Lady Jane Pierce then 
started any way she could to try to communicate with her son and started dealing with mediums. And and we know that uh, President Pierce actually sat in on one of the seances. And so there was some of that. And he took a lot of heat back in the day of, you know, what what is our president doing? And, um, you know, as, as though they forgot that these were also still humans who were grieving and dealing with the loss of a child. And, and First Lady uh, Jane Pierce, she... You know, she started having dream visitations from her son. They started seeing, uh, she started seeing him and communicating with him in the house. Um, so the question then is, is this truly the spirit of her son? Is it insanity and a grieving mother? Or by her want and desire, did she open up a portal and allow something in that took the form of a child? So we don't know these answers specifically. And Sadly, you know, Abraham Lincoln um, had lost a child. They got into uh, the the White House and his son, Willie Todd Lincoln, passed away from, um, it was like a tuberculosis. And I can't remember the, the actual disease he had at that time, but he passed away while residing in the White House. And that sent Mary Todd Lincoln spiraling down and she began having communication. And as a matter of fact, when they lost their son, Franklin Pierce wrote to Abraham Lincoln you know, kind of giving him love and support for this loss. And it was an interesting time, but, you know, here you've got two grieving mothers and and all of this going on. And, you know, supposedly uh, Willie would show up at the White House, the ghost. And many years later, there were people that would witness this young boy's ghost in the White House. And since Willie Todd Lincoln was the only boy that we knew that died in the White House, it's been assumed that that was him. But Abraham Lincoln's ghost has been seen by dignitaries, politicians, and employees of the White House. There's been a lot of great stories surrounding the the high strangeness. And even Barbara and Jenna Bush, uh, President Bush's daughters, and they've been very vocal about this, have talked about the fact that there was weird paranormal activity that would happen in the White House. And as a matter of fact, one night they had a very weird encounter. I don't want to give it away because it's in the documentary, The Shock Doc. Uh, they talk about it and they actually talk to the White House butler who said, oh, I know, I know there's strange things. I've been seeing it and hearing it for years. So it's it's just an interesting and compelling angle to look at. And then, Jimmy, you got to remember, one of the most hated men in the world is the president, right? By half of America usually, and then three quarters of the world. Right. And if you're sending that kind of anger, resentment, hatred focus to, energy right, yes yes right is that creating a dark force capable of manipulating the presidents and you can look that there's been a lot of you know just you've got bill clinton you've got um you know john f kennedy you know about the the affairs the drug use things like that that took place in the white house and, and that reared its ugly head and certainly we know that there were others and other presidents that did some pretty nasty things when they were in office is that absolute power corrupting absolutely or was something darker in the white house moving these guys now with um with uh we have two first ladies here pierce Mm -hmm. and and lincoln Mm -hmm. um what about the presidents themselves did they encounter the ghost of their children according to most accounts they did not but you know, you had Abraham Lincoln had a dream, um, and he was walking through the White House, and there was somebody laying in state in the front room, and he approached one of the uh, Secret Service agents and said, or one of the security agents there, and said, what's going on here? And the, the agent looked surprised and said, uh, you know, who, when President Lincoln said, who's dead? And he goes, it's the president, sir. And Lincoln looked, and it was him in the coffin. He also had a vision one day while looking in the mirror. He saw his reflection double up. He could see himself, and then he saw this very old, decrepit version of him. And he knew that that meant he would win a second term in office but would not survive it. So he had these premonitions as well um, of his future. So it's pretty pretty interesting in, in that he was open about that. He he kind of had the sense. And then you've got to think about the fact that there's also Lincoln's surviving son, right? 
was, I believe he was one of the ones that was supposed to be there the night that he was assassinated and would have been blocking the door more. So it would have been harder for Wilkes Booth to get in. I believe is how the story goes, but he was there for uh, the assassination of two other presidents. So, you know, there's, there's weird kind of supernatural twists to a lot of, of the history. And then of course we know that when Ronald Reagan was in office, Nancy, after uh, the, the assassination attempt on Ron really relied heavily on astrology and numerology. And there were certain days R Reagan just would not leave office because it was a bad day to go out. Um, so, you know, he said, ah, I'm not, you know, my, my ideas and, and, dictates don't come from the supernatural realm, but I think he hedged his bet. If it's a good idea to stay home today, I'll stay home. And uh, what about the atmosphere of, of the country back then where mediums and contact with the dead, it must, it sounds to me like it must've been pretty mainstream if the first ladies at the, at the white house immediately go to that first because society more or less accepted what was going on? Well, you got to remember that these were moments of war and and high pressure and stress throughout our, our country. Sure. And during those moments is when spirituality was at a peak. Um, you know, during wartime is when mediums and spiritualist movements really escalate. And people are looking for those answers, seeking answers outside of normal realms like the church. And, and they want to make these connections. And I've often wondered, Jimmy, you know, when you think about ghosts and most people's encounters with ghosts, what time era do most people say that these ghosts are from? Why don't we have ghosts of Cro-Magnon? <laughs> right? Or Roman gladiators. You hear Dinosaurs. that there are some... I mean, dinosaurs need respect sure. too, right? Well, maybe that's what Loch Ness Monster is. Maybe Bigfoot is Cro-Magnon Man. Who knows? You know, there could be elements of that. But we know that most accounts are from the uh, 1800s through the early 1900s when the spiritualist movement was at its peak. And did we create a rupture in the space-time spiritual continuum by calling forth these spirits constantly? So it's an interesting concept that maybe that's why we see spirits from that era more than any other. We've we've created that rift for them to come and go through. And that could be an aspect of it. But spirituality is, you know, around wartime is always big. And when you think about it, Jimmy, this new renaissance of the supernatural right. really kicked off again after 9-11. When people returned to churches in droves seeking answers and weren't finding them, they started turning to... Uh, and I remember reading about this in the news at the time, at the beginning of Darkness Radio, witchcraft and witch covens were showing exponential growth. Pagan religions were exploding because people weren't finding the answers in normal church. And this isn't me slamming normal church. This is me seeing that there were some failings from a normal paradigm. So people sought answers elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And then you got to realize that within a short time, like four years, we've got most haunted, dead famous, uh, ghost hunters, ghost adventures, paranormal state. You know, that's really kind of the tip of the iceberg for these paranormal shows. But they've always been popular, but that really created this boom. And, uh, you know, when we started Darkness Radio, there were, as, as I know, those coast to coast, and there were only about four other paranormal style radio shows out there. And now you can't. Yeah, scroll yeah. through a, a podcast guide without running into 2000 of them, mm -hmm. no matter where you are. Right. So it, it shows, but there is an interest and there's a fascination and people want to understand what, what happens, what comes next. Uh, do we live past these physical forms? Now you, you just said two things that I've got to circle back to. I find it okay. extremely interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, why don't we see ghost of Cro-Magnon or Neanderthal or cavemen? And when you just said that, well, maybe Bigfoot, maybe that is what is going on. That is fascinating. Uh, that is something I'm not going to uh, let get away. I'm going to come back to that on future shows. Sure. And then last night, Margie K was on with us. I love Margie. She's amazing. And she had this case in, I think it was in Kansas uh, Kansas City of this older couple that had everything going on at their house. 
They had um, uh, they had U- a UFO that was coming over the house. They had a, a ghost lady walking down the street. They had fairies living in the tree in their front yard. And they also, uh, a few miles away, a, a ghost, I mean, a, a pterodactyl. Now, I, I was just cracking a joke, right? Uh, dinosaurs need respect, too. <laughs> Where are their right. ghosts? Maybe that pterodactyl they're seeing is a ghost of a pterodactyl. It's not physical. It could be. Look at how many places still in the southwest, uh, Papua New Guinea, places like that still see these large birds. And and now we can say there are some drones that are shaped like pterodactyls. Right. There are kites, huge kites. So could you be mistaking? But these cases were happening before drones, before these massive kites were, were being flown. So we don't know, but you're right. Maybe we're seeing these threadbare moments in time and space mm-hmm. when through a window, we see these elements of our past occurring right now. And, and I think that that's a lot more to do with what the paranormal is or these time slips, these broken moments that allow us to see through it. As a matter of fact, I was talking to Jeff Belanger today and, uh, he wrote a book called who's haunting the white house. And it's a great book, and he wrote it for kids. That's how he got the approval of the White House, was that let's teach history through ghost stories. And as he was telling me the story and reminding me of the story of the uh, Lincoln having this dream uh, or having this vision, I often wondered, wouldn't it be interesting to talk to this the, the Secret Service agent that was there that day? Did he, in fact, see the spirit of Abraham Lincoln walk in and ask him, what's going on here? And was that why this guy was kind of shocked and said, uh, the president's dead, sir? Was it because he was witnessing the ghost of Abraham Lincoln and having one of those time slip moments? And I know two former guards of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier at Arlington Cemetery. And these two independent guys who do not know one another served at different points had exactly the same stories. They were told to guard the tomb and that you will see this person, that person, and the other. Uh, One of them is like uh, a colonel. When he comes up, you simply salute him and do not speak. He will salute back and enter the tomb. And it's a spirit, Jim. (laughs) For God's sakes, they're seeing spirits walk in and out of the tomb and their job is to be unaffected by it. What? To yes, yeah. And it, that was the crazy aspect. And the one guy I know, I know him extremely well. And he was my neighbor. He was a military guy, and that was his job. One summer was guarding the tomb of the unknown soldier. And then I met through happenstance another guy many years later, and I, you know, he was talking about ghosts and cemeteries and i'm like i don't know i have a hard time buying cemeteries being haunted why would you stay with your rotting corpse and he said well i can tell you i was a guard at the uh you know the tomb of the unknown soldier and i saw spirits all the time and we used to have this colonel that would walk up the stairs and you had to salute him he would salute back and enter the the tomb it was it was like broken record same story two totally different guys separated by like 12 years that's incredible to me that's a great, yeah, I mean, me too. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I'm a military brat and I know how regimented, uh, no, no pun intended, the military is, and it's all about training. So, and your training encompasses, and by the way, there's going to be a ghost of a colonel is going to come up. You show respect, you salute back, mm-hmm. right? It's like, okay, right. all right, training complete. And then it actually happens. Mm-hmm. That's, 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 that's just crazy to me. Um, uh, back to, uh, uh, what, uh, there's talking about haunted places mm-hmm. and, uh, I've talked about this way too much on the show, but I have you on, um, I just moved into uh, a new house and, and I've got a ghost, Dave, I mm-hmm. got a ghost, I got a ghost. I got, I got stuff moving. I got stuff moving in my house and, and now how dramatically are we talking? Jimmy? Uh, uh, stuff is moving, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay. and, uh, uh, I mean, just like, just strange things that shouldn't happen, things that shouldn't move. Um, okay. You're looking at the camera. Okay. All yeah. right, Dave, I'm going to, I'm going to grab this camera here. This is independent mm-hmm. of all the other cameras. I'm right. going to point this down. To the corner of the room right there and you can see in the corner that's two black 
pieces of foam core underneath the shelf leaning right. against the wall. You see that? Okay. Right. All right. I'm going to put the camera back. A couple of weeks ago, I walk into the studio. I come in. I don't see that yet. But I see this over here on this wall. I have a I Want to Believe poster. You see that? Right. That's bolted. Right? right? Mm -hmm. Okay. The I Want to Believe poster is down. And... And I'm looking at it, and I was like, what, what's, what's going on with that? And the, the fastener on the back of that, that's foam core. The fastener on the back, this plastic, th it, it broke in half. I still, I've saved it. It's as thick as a credit card. That's mm -hmm. broken, and the poster's down on the ground. There's no way that the plastic can break in half. So that kind of flips me out. I jury rig it. I get it back up. I bolt it. Now it's bolted to the wall. It's not fall, you know. So I, f I, I get that project done. I sit down in this chair, and I just turn around, and then that black foam core that I just showed you is in the middle of the studio floor. It's leaning up against the wall in the corner, and it's out here in the middle of the floor, and. And I, I, I just can't figure that. That's only one of dozens of things. So, um, and that happened at once. And so I'm thinking to myself, I, I can go one of two routes. I can freak myself out, mm -hmm. investigate, you know, sage, salt on the floor, whatever. Right? I can bring in. Uh, you or Tony Rathman, you know, Zach Bagans, have them come over and, and, and undemonize my house. Or I can just let it go and just accept the fact that there's strangeness happening here. And, right. and I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. Let's just let it go. All right. Let's take a hit off the cosmic bong of, of paranormal now. Okay. I want to put this in your mind, Jimmy. In the afterlife, right? There is no time. What if, Jimmy, this is your spirit from the future giving you a sign, and I'm planting the seed in your mind right now so that when you do pass away, you come back and knock the poster down and kick that piece of foam to get your attention. What if it's you going, hey, Jim, we're still here, buddy. What if that's what's going on? Because people want to believe a haunting is our past. Right. Time is not linear. Right. So- could it be that it's something from the future haunting you? Is it your own spirit coming back to visit and get your attention, trying to give you signs that there is something beyond? Right, right, right. And uh, I'm going to take... Uh, ear, ear. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, um, I'm going to... Uh, this is what's really cool. I'm going to take a picture of you. I want you... Okay, okay. that's it. I'm going to send this to you. And this is Are what I'm going to show me that there's somebody behind me. I'm going to show you what's going on right now. Stop it. And, uh, and, and you tell me, man. You tell me. You tell me. You tell me if that isn't weirdness. Okay. Are we seeing stuff pop up behind me, Jimmy? Okay. So that, take a good look at that picture. All right. Is it coming through on my cell phone? Yeah. All right. Might take a few minutes. I'm, I'm in the middle of, uh, Minnesota here, and I don't always get a, a quick return. I'll let you know as soon as it pops through. Right now, I have nothing. Okay. I just have the, uh, the message I sent you. Oh, here it comes. Okay. Here it comes. Let's see. Blow it up and take a real close look. All right. I'm blowing it up. What am I looking at? The background. The, the that, I think that's just my own shadow because I have my lights off. I'm dealing with a migraine. So the only light I've got on is my screen in front of me. I think it's blowing out behind me. It's giving you a false shadow. It's effect. awesome, man. Yeah. And you're telling me ghost stories and I'm looking at that. <laughs> I've got, oh, I know. Demonic you know, Dave. I've, I've had moments where uh, we've been on air and we've had this. We we spoke with, um, oh my gosh, her mind is, her name is blanked out of my mind right now. She was a UFO experiencer. Um, she had a very, very famous story kind of, and she even knew Betty and Barney Hill. And I'm trying to remember her Ka name. It's like Kathleen a, Martin. No, it's like a th that's that's their niece, right? Right, right. Um, it's another woman, and it's th a three name. Fa you know, I, I I can't think of it offhand. I apologize. Anyway, I'm talking with her and her husband on the air when we're on uh, KTLK. Tim is producing, and 
she's telling a story and throws to her husband who's sitting in another room. And as he begins to talk, Jimmy, I hear something. And I'm like, I go, wait a minute. Did, hold on a second, sir. Did your wife just say something? He's like, no, I, I don't know. Did you say something? She goes, no, I didn't say anything. And I'm like, no, I, I heard a voice and Tim's shaking his head at me. He didn't hear it. So we go to commercial break. He marked the time, went in there and found the piece. And it was a very small peak, but he blew it up. And there's this female voice that says, I'm going to kill you. What? That comes over their phone line. It was crazy. Um, so we've had those moments. I also did uh, an episode where I was talking um, and I did a video. So I was talking with the guest and she's got her glasses on. And as we're talking, things are appearing in her reflection of her glasses. And at first I'm like, oh, that's my reflection. And I'm like, oh, no, that's not me. That's something else. And I like pointed out to her during the show. And uh, I've had screen caps of it and people were, oh my God, what the hell is that? So we've had some really cool moments that have unfolded during live shows where you just can't, I can't make sense of it. Um, when I was hosting Midnight in the Desert one night, we were talking about egregores. And uh, again, the guest's name eludes me after 16 years. And we're talking about egregores and uh, all of a sudden it's one o'clock in the morning, central time my TV starts blaring in the, in the living room and I'm in my home studio and my wife is sitting at her desk working and I'm like, what the hell go ch-? And I mute my, my microphone. I'm like, what the hell, what, what goofy kid is up at this time of night? So she gets out there. I hear the TV go off. Uh, I open up my mic. I start talking and all of a sudden the TV's blaring and I mute my mic again. And I'm like, what the, what is going on here? She finally goes off again. When he comes in the room, eyes huge like saucers, and I go to commercial break, I go, what is going on? Who's out there screwing with the TV? She goes, David, there is nobody in the living room. She goes, and when I walked out there, all the remotes are sitting on the end table. The volume is going up by itself on the TV. I'm watching the volume. I'm like, okay. The skeptic in me says, what's happening is a neighbor across the street probably has the same TV, and he's probably, you know doing like we do and holding it over his shoulder and pushing buttons and doesn't realize he's affecting my TV. She goes, that's what I thought. She goes, so I turned off the TV. It turned back on and the volume started going up. So I unplugged the TV. Then the DVD player turns on and the drawer starts opening and shutting. On its oh own. no, no. And no, yeah. No. So we're like, what the heck? So we're talking and, uh, and I believe it was in that same episode, all of a sudden against the side of our house, we hear Boom. It, I thought a car hit the side of our house and we get knocked off air. And I go, look, I can't get back on the internet. I can't do it. And it wasn't like a, a transformer blew a block away or something. This sounded like it hit my house. Right. Nothing's outside. Nothing's going on. Crazy. Uh, and then what's great is we bought a house a block and a half away from the house that we were renting. And on my last night there, we had moved every room of the house over to the new house. And I'm in my studio at the old house by myself doing my show. I wrap up Midnight in the Desert. I say, thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll be back again next week with, you know, a brand new episode of Midnight in the Desert. And I, I sign off. And all of a sudden, I hear the door shut. And I hear walk, walking around. And I'm like, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. It's a school night, so I know it's not my kids. So I text my wife. I go, where are you? And she's like, in home, at home in bed listening to the show. And I'm like, I just heard somebody walk in. Are the or one of the kids here? She's like, no, everybody's sleeping. So I literally put myself in the be bedroom closet, and I call 911. What? And I'm like, okay, stop I'm right like, there. I got to take a break. Okay. I, I, let me get right. the break in. Let me get the break in. Okay. Oh, I'm on the edge of my seat. Like I said, I'm taking the night off. This is Dave's show. It is Schrader night. We'll be right back. Stay with us. You're listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church. You're listening to Fade to Black. Oh, 
always on the edge of the hottest alternative talk, Jimmy Church with Fade to Black. ¿Qué tal mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carson, el tiburón, y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. ¡Claro que sí! The new KUNXDB, the UNX Network, bringing you the best in paranormal programming in premium, high-definition streaming audio and video. Log on to the network at unxnetwork.com and check out the growing lineup of programs, including Jimmy Church, Whitley Strieber, Micah Hanks, and many more. Sign up for the free UNX newsletter, follow the UNX blog, or pick up the latest edition of the UNX magazine. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. So check us out at unxnetwork.com. Tap the show page and the calendar so you never miss your favorite live shows and podcasts. We are your portal for all things paranormal. The X, explaining the unexplained. Bader Knots. When you think about the future of our country and where we're headed, do you wonder about the food supply? I do. Disruptions in the food supply chain could be disastrous, and they usually occur with little warning. That's why the smartest thing you can do today is to stockpile emergency food, water, and other essentials. I personally recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's largest emergency preparedness company, serving millions of customers for more than a decade. In fact, they're the only source my family trusts for our preparedness plan. You should too. Right now, save 20% off a full four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. Saving 20% helps too, doesn't it? Especially now. So go to preparewithjimmy.com and get ready. That's preparewithjimmy.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. Fade or not. When you think about the future of our country and where we're headed, do you wonder about the food supply? I do. Disruptions in the food supply chain could be disastrous, and they usually occur with little warning. That's why the smartest thing you can do today is to stockpile emergency food, water, and other essentials. I personally recommend My Patriot Supply. They're the nation's largest emergency preparedness company, serving millions of customers for more than a decade. In fact, they're the only source my family trusts for our preparedness plan. You should too. Right now, save 20% off a full four-week supply of delicious meals that provide 2,000 calories a day. Saving 20% helps too, doesn't it? Especially now. So go to preparewithjimmy.com and get ready. That's preparewithjimmy.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. You listen to us, and we listen to you. And so does the CIA. (laughs) You are listening to Fade to Black with Jimmy Church on the Game Changer Network. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is revolution. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution is on radio. Ciao. Fade to Black, the one and only Dave Schrader. That's right. 
Dave is with us tonight, and uh, I was looking at some of the comments in the chat, and uh, if that's a Christmas ornament, Dave, you are bleeping weird. That's 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 all I got to say. Is that on? Your, is that going to be on your tree? <laughs> uh, yeah, it is actually. That's uh, that's our buddy. That's our Christmas tree ornament. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. And uh, it, it, I was just think I was reading the comments and. He, we have uh, this new amazing network. It's number one uh, called the Unex Network. You should come over, man, and do a show with me. All right. No, I'm ser- I'm being serious. I was too, Jimmy. What are you? Would that be? I mean, sit in your lap and prove I mean it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it's a great idea. Mm-hmm. I think it's a great. I'm idea. all for it. Okay. All right. We'll talk about that later. Um, so you're in the closet. Scared, okay. scared like a little kid. Yeah, here's here's and, the the quick deal again. I'm moving. It's my last night in the house. Every other room is cleared of everything. The only thing left is my desk, my computer, my system for broadcasting. Everything else is gone. I sign off midnight in the desert, and uh, I put down my headphones and I hear the door open and shut, and I hear somebody walking around. So I text my wife. It's two o'clock in the morning, a school night. I'm like, are you here? She's like, no, I'm in at home in bed listening to the show. I go, are any of the kids here? Nope. Everybody's sound asleep. I tuck myself in the closet in that bedroom and I dial 911 and I'm like, you got to get here. I'm moving out. I don't know if somebody's cased the house, realize we're moving out and they're coming in to see if there's anything left to loot. They're like, we'll be right there. So the cops pull in. I look out through the closet door. I see him in the driveway. I crank open the window and I give him the code to my garage. And they're like, stay there. Oh, okay. So I stay there. The two cops pull their guns and go into my garage. I can hear them walking throughout the entire house. Finally outside the bedroom door. And every other bedroom door is open. I hear. And I go, <laughs> who is it? It's the uh, blah, blah, blah police department. I'm like, okay, come on in. So the two cops, because there's one big cop, big guy, and then there's this woman that's with them that's like five foot one, right? And they're like, sir, we did a complete check of the home. There's all the doors and windows are shut and locked. There's nobody else in this house. And I'm like, all right, I, I'm just telling you, I, I finished up my radio show. And they go, oh, you do a radio show? Yeah, what what kind? Well, it's a paranormal radio show. And then you could see them both just kind of look at me like, oh, geez. Right. And then, Jimmy, the greatest thing in the world happened. They start hearing footsteps walking around downstairs. Shut the front door. Right. And the two of them stop and look at me. And then they give me the shh sound, right? They put their finger to their lips and make no sound. And they point at the closet. I step back to the closet. The two cops go shut the door. They've got the guns drawn. Do another full sweep of the house. Nobody there. They come back up. They open up the door. They go, we need to get out of here. And I go, did you find somebody? They're like, no, let's all leave together. And Mr. Schrader, don't come back till tomorrow when it's light. That was their response to me. So we pulled out and that was, uh, that was my last night in this house. But we had... Living there in that room, the reason I took over that bedroom, uh, we had to move our our youngest boy, Max, into the basement with his other two brothers because Max would see the shadow man leaning out of the closet. And at times at night, he would hear laughter coming from underneath his bed. So I made that room my studio. And I never had any experiences till that last night in that area, in that room. I never heard anything. I never saw anything. No weird voices ever came over the microphone. So I was, I, you know, I thought, oh, he's overactive imagination. But then to hear the footsteps and my wife and I had heard and seen things before in the house. Uh, so it, it, that was a crazy place. Now we've been here for two years, a block and a half away. And we do have some weird activity from time to time taking place. Um, now, since we've moved in here, though, both of her parents have passed away. So I don't know if that's it. Our neighbor directly next door to me passed away. And he was a huge fan of the paranormal. And we never could connect. We'd talk for a few minutes out on the deck here and there. And he's like, man, I got some stories I want to tell you. We got to get together. And when I was filming season two of Holzer Files, I came home at the end of filming. And I'm unloading my truck. And I see my neighbor's wife. I'm like, hey, how you doing? And she just gets this crestfallen look and she walks over and she goes, oh, you didn't hear? And I said, no. She goes, yeah, uh, a week ago, I, uh, you know, my husband took the dog for a walk, came back, and then I went for a run and I came back 45 minutes later and he had died on the couch. And I'm like, oh God. And then shortly after then we started having activity over here and I was like, oh, I wonder if he's coming over to try to 
tell me the ghost stories finally. So we've had weird experiences in this house. Nothing I ever feel threatened by, um, but just, you know, booms, bangs, knocks. I had uh, just, when I just got back from filming the new series, we were laying in bed and um, I sleep with the blanket up against my face, not out of fear, but just, I, I you know, I just have always done that. So I've got the blanket up against my face and I feel very strongly this hand kind of shoved me between my shoulder blades. And I'm laying there and I'm thinking, what does my wife want now? And then I realize she's on the other side of me. So I sit up real quick and I look around my room and I ask my wife, I wake her up. I go, did you just push me by any? She's like, no. I said, okay. I go back to sleep. About an hour later, I feel something crawling on the bed, crawl up on top of me. And I thought, oh, maybe it's my wife. She's just laying on top of me to cuddle. And then all of a sudden I realized, oh no, what just had happened? So I sat up and I just sat up in my room. I go, this is not cool. You do (laughs) not have permission to touch me. You do not have permission to do this. If you want to communicate with me, you find another way, but you don't touch me and you don't get in bed with me. Right? So I I try to set boundaries, but nothing, again, I don't know if it's just something trying to get my attention. If it's, you know, I, I don't know what it is. I uh, I had something similar. I talked about it on the show briefly a couple of weeks ago. But uh, I was lying on my side, uh, and I had my iPad on. TV Mm -hmm. is on, right, Mm -hmm. at the foot of the bed. So I'm doing what everybody does, right? I'm on on the Internet, and the TV's on at the same time, right? So I'm lying on my side. I'm watching TV, and but I'm on my side looking at my iPad. And from my back, I get a shove, like in my back. And Mm -hmm. I didn't look, I didn't react. I, I peed a little bit on myself, but, (laughs) but I did not want to turn around. I I didn't, I was just like, man, what? And it was a very defined shove, uh, right, right between my shoulder blades. And, and it was, uh, it was strange, man. And and no, I, I I didn't want to look. I didn't want to turn around. I didn't want to react. I should have done what you did. Um, but yeah, you know, there's there's something creeping around here, and and I've just resigned uh, to you know I'm I'm going to accept it. I have. I'm very cautious. I tell people not to investigate their homes because I think once you turn that light on, it's hard to turn it off, and you don't know who you're inviting in. But like I said, Jimmy, with our curiosity and love for the unknown, it's not beyond the realm of believing that why wouldn't we come back to ourselves at some point while we're, while we're still interested in investigating this to kind of try to connect with who we are. Have you, and are your parents still alive? My, uh, no, I lost my mom sadly five years ago on November 15th. Uh, she passed from cancer. Um, my, uh, my bio dad is still alive and my stepdad is still alive. So, thank, okay. you know, I'm thankful for that. Uh, has your mom, uh, my mom passed away about five years ago too. And back in the day, she was a big believer in all things like Edgar Casey and the paranormal and automatic mm-hmm. writing and Ouija boards. And, and if anybody was going to come back for a visit, you know, I would have thought it w- would be her, but I haven't had that visit. Did, has your mom come back and said hello? All right. Great question. I, you know, my mom and I both love the paranormal. She attended all of my darkness radio events all over the United States. And when she was on her deathbed, we were talking about it. And I'm like, mom, have you seen grandpa or grandma? No. I said, have you had any? Said, no. And about a day later, she was laying in bed talking. All of a sudden she looked up. She was, oh, look at that. That's beautiful. And she just looked up at the sky and I said, what mom? And then she kind of snapped out of it and looked at me and she's like, Oh, nothing. And I was like, I don't what, what? So I was expecting mom to show herself to me in some way. My kids have had dream visitations. My aunt has dream visitations. I have not, but here's my honest to God thought, Jimmy. And I try to comfort myself with this. I will start off with this aspect. I think mom doesn't necessarily come to me because I have dealt with depression and anxiety and suicidal thoughts throughout my life. Mm -hmm. If I think, oh, we do live past this deal. Is that, is that enough that maybe someday when I do hit a low point, I'm less 
likely to stop from killing myself. Um, so I don't know if it's kind of a service to me that mom doesn't make herself known that way. I don't know if that makes sense, but you know, I, I often wonder if we knew that there was an afterlife a hundred percent, how many people would check out early? And that worries me, you know, because when you think, Hey, if I know there's another life coming and I know there's forgiveness, I can't deal with this anymore. Too much loss, too much pain, and you're gone. Right. Rent is due in, in a week. Right. right. So I think I'm a lot of times out. I don't get the full answer. And just by the way, I want to tell you, since you and I started talking about weird paranormal things at home, mm-hmm. your your camera keeps popping in and out like it's trying to focus on something even when you're sitting still. Oh, Really? Yes. Oh, so as thanks, we're talking, I, yeah, thanks, I see Dave. it keep popping yeah. back and forth. I, but, well, I wanted to be yeah, open that's all that. I need is a ghost behind me. Right. Yeah. Uh, get thee behind me. Right. But um, <laughs> so here was a cool thing. I was, uh, I've, I've been lucky enough to do some of these uh, Chris Jericho's wrestling and rock rager crews. I'm his paranormal guy. I go on and I tell ghost stories and the campfire tales and do my podcast live from the Jericho cruise. And then I got hired to do the last Walker stalker cruise for the walking dead cast. And I have a necklace with a, a crucifix on it that has my mom's ashes in it. And I take it all over because she loved to travel. So I take her on these trips. Well, we came back from the Walker Stalker cruise and it was gone. And I was heartbroken. I'm like, oh, no, I lost it at sea. Oh, no, this sucks. This is horrible. How could I? Oh, geez. And I was just heartbroken. And a couple months pass. And as strange as it sounds, I have control of my mom's Facebook account after she passed. But to comfort myself, sometimes I'll send her an email on Facebook. Cause I know I'm the only one that can access it. And I wrote her one day and I just, I'm like, mom, I miss you so much. I, you know, I just wish you were here. I, I don't know what reason it is that I don't get to see you or sense you or smell you or whatever. But if you could just give me any kind of sign that you're around anything, just something that would let me know it's you, I would appreciate that. About two days later, my son, Max, has been missing his glasses for over a week. We've looked everywhere. Nobody can find them. So I, I send the kids loose. I'm like, listen, there's a $5 bounty on whoever finds these glasses. Here's five bucks. First one to bring me the glasses wins. And, you know, glasses are a pretty good size. Well, my my son, Damien, comes up to me and bless his heart. He's got this little, we have these little Egyptian clay jars. Um, and, you know, the jar of life and everything. Where they used to put, like, the brain and the heart and things in those. And these are. Right, all right. These are, are repops. They're not real ones, right? Uh, but he brings me the Anubis jar, which is small. It's only, you know, maybe four inches tall, obviously too small for a pair of glasses. And um, he brings me the Anubis jar and he goes, Dad, look what I found. And he lifts the lid off. And Jimmy, hand to God, there's no necklace, but the crucifix is sitting inside what? the Anubis jar. What? No necklace, just just the crucifix. And I'm like, holy cow. So within two days of asking for a sign, or maybe it was even the next day, I think it might've been the next day, within 24 to 48 hours of asking for a sign, my mom's necklace shows up. So the, the, the crucifix. So I'm like blown away. Okay, cool. Well, you know, the the skeptical side of me still at play. Did that, was it just really amazing coincidence? So I'm, I'm filming the season finale of this new program and I wear... I have it on a a leather strap on my wrist with the crucifix uh, so that I've got it with me as I'm filming every episode for protection and just to have mom with me. And I get back to my hotel room and I'm taking off my jewelry and I realize the leather band is there unbroken, but the necklace, the, the, the cross is missing. I'm like, what, how in the hell? (laughs) And I'm, I'm like, this is crazy. So I call my director. I tell him, Hey man, you know, can you look in the the church where we were or on the road? It might've fallen off. It means a lot to me. He's like, yeah, yeah, no problem. And he texts me. He's like, man, I can't find it anywhere. I walked our entire route and, you know, with a flashlight and it's not there. So I look up and my wife's sitting there and I look up and I go, mom, you did it for me one other time. I need you to step up. I need, I need the cross back. Mom, where are you? Jimmy, 45 seconds later, I get a text from my director and he goes, look what I found under my bed. And there's my mom's cross under his bed in his room. What? Yes. So now that is the room that I used as a changing room. Yeah. But I still had the band on my wrist unbroken. 
and the, he finds the crucifix and it's got a metal clasp and it's not one of those little O-rings that opens up at the top. It's a legitimate sealed clasp and it's there's no way to open it unless it breaks and it's off the cross or it's off the band, but the, the clasp isn't broken and it's not disturbed. I, I have no answer for it. So has mom shown herself to me? I've asked twice for a sign and twice her crucifix. Returns. You miss, you miss, I, okay. You miss the opportunity though. Of what? Max's glasses. You should have said, hey, mom. <laughs> that was much less important to me at that Easy moment. But I think we found the glasses a day later. So, oh, See, that was your mom. That was your yeah, mom. Yeah, could be. I mean, she would understand. You know, mom, I, I'm yeah. going to have to go to the eye doctor. We're going to have to go and get the prescription made. Or you can help and, and return his glasses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she she found the way to reach me, and, and she did. So I, I would like to ascribe that to my mom's visitation without visiting. Um, the, the Anubis jar, though, that is, they're right. that, that's pretty whacked out. Yeah. That's pretty Inside whacked out. Inside the jar. Why? How would it have gotten in there? From the cruise. Why would it have gotten yeah, in there? From the there? cruise right. into yeah. the jar without the yeah. chain. Without the chain and at home, completely unaware of how it got there. So I'm I'm boggled by it. So I just whatever. I'm excited. I'm I, I'm glad I got it back. It, it, so when when, um, uh, when conversation. Let's, I want to talk about mediums for a second and the afterlife. Mm-hmm. Um, this hap- There's so much emotion and you know trauma, drama uh, when we lose a loved one and and the memories. Um, is a medium something that you trust? Is there a connection there? Is that something that is real? I have seen some really impressive mediums. You know, I've worked with Cindy Kaza now, uh, two seasons of the whole Holzer Files. She this is new amazing, season of, by the way. She's amazing. Yeah. She's amazing. This new show we just did. And, and I really give her a lot of credit because we go into these locations that are several hundred years old and she's got a, funnel through story after story to get to the ghost we're trying to communicate with and she does it and it's um, when she strikes it's remarkable um and i've seen mark uh, or i'm sorry michael and marty perry the perry normals they call themselves out of california and uh she is a spirit artist he is a um evidential medium and i've seen them do things and say things that they just should not be able to do or know it's it's just unbelievable um and and truly not just like grasping at straws one of the most amazing things i've seen jimmy was we were doing a they were doing a gallery session at the stanley hotel and michael is focused over into the from stage he's focused over to his right talking to somebody and connecting them with their mother or daughter or something and He's talking, and all of a sudden he, he, he says, I'm sorry, could you wait one second? And he looks over to the left side of the audience, and he goes, I'll be with you in a moment. Let me finish up here. And he goes back and starts talking to the spirit, and and he's like, I'm so sorry. This is uh, I this has never happened. Please just wait. And he pauses, and he goes back to the left side of the audience, and he goes, I, I'm aware you're here. I know you're here, but as you see, I'm dealing with this. Can you please be patient? And then he looks at that audience. He goes, I have a very strange request here. There is a large horse and it's got a Harlequin like face. It's white on one side, dark on the other. He's got one blue eye. Does anybody know who this horse belongs to? And this woman in the aisle raises her hand and he goes, we're going to come back to you in a moment there. Now she knows that, you know, that they're here. So just wait. And he goes back over, finishes up with this woman. He turns around and he goes, what? Okay, and then he he delivers this message from this woman's horse, and he detailed what this horse looked like. It was bonkers. <laughs> and and then he wraps that up, and he goes, I've got a cowboy standing in the front row here. Um, yes, okay, go ahead. Yeah? Oh, I, I don't know. This sounds weird. Uh, he, his last name is Earp. Uh, I think this is Wyatt Earp. And the guy in the front row just sits back in his chair and he goes, are you kidding me? And he gets up and leaves. And Michael's like, Ooh, well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I must have pissed him off. So he goes back to doing some readings. The guy comes back in the room and Michael goes, "What? where'd you go, mate? What happened? And he goes, I, I, I had to get this to show this to you. He goes, I'm the genealogist of our family. And while I was here in Colorado, I was doing some research on our family and I just uncovered this and he opens up the genealogy folder and finds out he's related to Wyatt Earp. 
And how how could Michael and Marty have known that? It's I mean, the guy just found out like that day right. and had come back with the research. Right. It's just bonkers. He goes, I've told nobody about this, and I just found this connection out. And he goes, well, your, your great great uncle is here, and just wants you to know, you know, welcome to the family. You know, kind of. It's just so bizarre. And he was seated in the front row. Yeah. Where Wyatt appeared. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. What, what do you, um, is this, uh, we've got two minutes before the break and, uh, we're going to change subjects when we come back. So get ready for that. But, um, is this an instant of some kind of quantum entanglement? You know, is this science that we haven't discovered yet? And it's probably very, very simple. We just don't understand what's going on. I think there's something to that. I don't know that it's necessarily the true ghosts. We know that people carry genetic memory from family. Right. So is is the connection to these people a way that as a medium you're sensitive enough that you're in there fishing through their file cabinet of memories and you're just connecting with these and they're kind of showing you like a view master slide mm -hmm. of that person's life and story to give you this tale or are, are the actual spirits. Some mediums will tell you, I don't know. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing. I can't tell you if it's not a projection from you. I can't tell you if it's really a ghost from the other side. So it's, it's intriguing to me. And I love mediums that won't pin themselves down and say, Oh no, it's definitely a ghost. They're telling me, I don't know, but here's the message I'm getting. Here's what I'm picking up for you. So I've seen some great mediums and I've seen some schlocky mediums. I've seen some schlocky mediums do a reading to help somebody that probably that person laying on, on a psychologist's couch for three years would not have gotten that kind of resolution. So I'm very cautious in how I cast dispersions because people find help in different ways. But, uh, you know, I think there are some incredibly dynamic Chris Fleming, Michael and Marty Perry, Chip Coffey, uh, Cindy Kaza. Uh, come to mind, uh, Robert Baca, you know, I've, I've Mark Anthony, the, the psychic right. attorney, he, uh, you know, psychic lawyers, amazing. So I've seen people that blow me away every time. And I've seen people that I'm like, yeah, I think I could have done that. Let's take our break right here. It is Schrader night here on fade to black. I'm your host, Jimmy church. I'm the co-host tonight. I'm just sitting in the chair because I got Dave. We'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Hi everybody, this is Rob Halford, the Metal Guard on JimmyChurchRadio.com Your 1 million gigawatt paranormal powerhouse KUNX DB VX are you ready to read about true paranormal events? Unex Media publishes nonfiction books about UFOs, ghosts and haunted places, time anomalies, cryptid creatures, and more. Just like KUNXDB Radio, it's all about unexplained phenomena. Visit www.unxmedia.com to see our list of great book titles by Debbie Ziegelmeyer, Gene Walker, Devin Listrom, Wayne Lawrence, Bill Spicer, and yours truly, Margie Kay. That's unxmedia.com. Why is it we're not very good with our health regimen until it's too late? We don't put oil in the car until the engine blows up. When the body's out of balance, your health is not so good. Give your body some love. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Try our Life Change Tea, which cleanses you from harmful intruders. A clean colon is one of the ways to bring the body in balance. We also carry organic supplements to help you get where you need to go. So do your body a favor. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. You can even visit our sales page to save some dough. Uh, does anybody call money dough anymore? Anyway, if you're looking for short, helpful health tips, go to YouTube and punch in Health Matters Now. That's Health Matters Now. So log on to GetTheTea.com, shop, get balanced, then learn some cool tips at Health Matters Now. You'll be glad you did. That's GetTheTea.com. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I only drink Fade to Black blend coffee from River Moon. Just click on the River Moon coffee banner at JimmyChurchRadio.com. Promo code F2B blend. This 
is the only way forward. This is Made to Black. Make contact. When you're in the house for longer periods of time, you can see them flying or running across the floor. Ooh, yuck. They're unhealthy, gross, and disgusting. Bugs. I loathe bugs. We keep a clean home, but occasionally bugs show up. Well, I found something that is tougher than bugs. Orange Guard. On contact, it kills hidden bugs, including ants, roaches, and fleas. Plus, Orange Guard is a residual repellent. All of the ingredients of Orange Guard are on the FDA generally recognized as safe list. Orange Guard may be used around food, humans, and pets. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Orange Guard. Available at OrangeGuard.com, Whole Foods, and Ace Hardware. Gold loves chaos uncertainty and disarray. History shows us what gold does when people aren't sure, aren't sure about the government, the stock market, their jobs, or their retirement savings. Our national debt is skyrocketing. Gold and other precious metals are a defense measure against inflation and a stock market that might take years to recover. So what can you do right now to protect yourself? Call United Gold Group. We offer gold and other precious metals delivered securely within 72 hours. Are you worried about the stock market, we can also help you set up a real gold or silver IRA or a 401k. Safe and secure, United Gold Group makes gold ownership affordable. Call now and get up to $2,500 in free gold or silver with a qualified IRA. Call 800-753-8534. That's 800-753-8534 or visit unitedgoldgroup.com. secret i love ponies i really love ponies i'm serious i couldn't stay sane without ponies to brush why fade to black because you never got that pony damn it this is fade to black with jimmy church on the game changer radio network Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. Tonight, Dave Schrader. That's right. The Schrader Knots are in the house. <laughs> and uh, Dave was letting me know during the break he's got uh, some breaking Nickelback news. Uh, I didn't know you were a Nickelback fan, Dave. I am. I've been trying to promote a, uh, a 45 cent tour, I call it. It's. Uh, it's 50 Cent with Nickelback off opening up for him. Wow. Calling, yeah, you like that? 50 that, Cent with the Nickelback? You know, and with uh, everything that happened over the last year and a half, no concerts, that mm-hmm. that that's a no-brainer right there. I thought so. Yeah, that's a no-brainer. Jericho opening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jericho's name, band Fozzie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what, man? Fozzie's the real deal. Yeah, it is. Oh, that's uh, that's a great man. That is hey, can I man. mention real quickly, just so we can touch on this? Sure. Uh, Friday, A Demon in the White House on Discovery Plus. That's the new shock doc I'm a part of. I promise it's not politically motivated. It's not about Biden or Trump. It's about the paranormal and the haunting of the White House. What's there? What could be there? And does it influence our presidents? And then, if you haven't seen it, I also did a really cool shock doc called uh, uh, The Curse of Lizzie Borden. That I did with Chris Fleming, the medium. I remember. Luann Jolly. Yep. And Sam Baltrusis, who is a distant relative of Lizzie Borden. We had a great time on that special. So a couple of uh, programs to watch over the next few days if you're bored and looking for paranormal fun. Tomorrow, watch uh, Lizzie, uh, Curse of Lizzie Borden on Discovery Plus. Friday, the brand new Shock Doc, Demon in the White House. And I'm on both of those. So hopefully you'll check them out and it'll keep you sated until the new series I'm a part of starts airing sometime in 2022. Yeah, you know, and and uh, your, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say it. The the success that you've made of uh, of this uh, on television, I'm I'm just very impressed with it. 
You know, Thank you. I mean, don't don't give up. Don't give up the mic. But uh, there's there's something there. There's something. There well, that, I, it, I'm a little bummed that Holzer Files didn't get picked up for future seasons. I think, I think the the loss was in the name of the show. Um, you know, when you've got a network that has ghost adventures, ghost nation, ghost hunters, kindred spirits, destination fear. You know, you've got uh, you've got shows that kind of sell you in the title what it is, and then you have Holzer Files. Right. Uh, unless you are a diehard paranormalist, and not just because of the TV shows, you might not know what a Holzer is. I wish they would have called it Holzer's Ghost Files. I think that would have kept us on the air. People seem to love the show. If you haven't watched it, it's on Discovery Plus and Travel. It's called The Holzer Files, and we re-examine the case files of Dr. Hans Holzer. And it was a great series. We did 23 episodes, uh, 10 in Season 1, 13 in Season 2. Uh, we sadly did not get picked up, but we're all working on new projects. Shane just filmed something for a major network. Uh, Cindy and I returned uh, as a team to work on a new project, and we just wrapped that up. And hopefully, that'll be out next season. Uh, you know, either spring or summer. And that's all I can say about that. Well, I thought you had ten seasons uh, uh, in front of you with Holzer Files. I mean, you had all of uh, the case files and. It was like an unlimited run, and I thought it was just going to continue. It was a fantastic show. You might be right, though. You know, the Holzer fear, right? That, that would have been, right. <laughs> you, the Holzer, you, Holzer's <laughs> ghosts, yeah. uh, you know, Holzer's paranormal files, something that would have sold in the title what it was. Right. Holzer files sounds like Rockford files. It could have been a 1970s, uh, you know, detective show. So I think we missed that opportunity. Uh, we made, I feel very proud of that program. As a matter of fact, I think we caught some of the best paranormal activity ever caught on a TV show, period, hands down. So I'm, I'm really proud of that series. And uh, um, I, I, I wish we could have gotten more out of it. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I, I saw 10 seasons there. Um, mm -hmm. But but here's the deal. Oh, I, I want to I circle back. I want to talk UFOs, mm -hmm. but we'll, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll come back to that. And hopefully um, maybe your wife will let you stay up a little late past your bedtime tonight, and we'll just keep this going. But here's the deal. Um, mm -hmm. we, we talk about noises. It's one thing to see stuff, but when you hear something like with you and the police, um, mm -hmm. I, I did something that you were involved with, uh, on the queen Mary. Right. 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 And, and, and I heard, a a, a voice for the first time, that was a paradigm shift for me, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, because when, you know, you're watching uh, different programs like Holzer or Ghost Adventures or whatever. And as a viewer, if you see somebody on the screen, hear something, you're not there. So you, uh, you know, it, it, it's fake. They didn't really hear it. They're doing this for the right. camera they, you know, right. and, and fair enough, because I do that too. But when it happens to you, mm -hmm. Dave, that's a whole nother thing. How can a ghost create a sound? How can a ghost create footsteps? Because now we're dealing with something physical, right? A voice, right? you know, that that's generated from somewhere. How does that What's happen? interesting. Yeah, what's interesting to me is, you know, EVP is electronic voice phenomena where we're recording the disembodied voices and sounds, which could exist in a magnetic frequency that our ears cannot pick up on, but the recorder translates that information. Right. DVP, which is what you're talking about, direct voice phenomena, hearing a, a voice out loud is much rarer. And what's interesting is, in a lot of cases, when we hear DVP, we don't record it. It doesn't show up on recording, but we heard it out loud. An entire group of people heard somebody talk or laugh or something, but it's not there on the recording. I don't know. Jimmy, I wish I had more insight into this. I, I, I love EVP because it's an immediate reaction. I get great EVP um, responses with my Panasonic DR60, uh, and I, I get some really cool stuff that, that occurs, but I don't understand how. I don't understand where it's coming from. Um, and again, is it just those moments when they're hearing our voice in their room 
and they're thinking their house is haunted because they're hearing these disembodied voices when we're really just, there was a wormhole, a sound wormhole that just allowed our voices tr- to traverse time and space and, and for a brief moment be heard on either side. It, in, in their world, are we the ghosts? Right. 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 Are we interrupting their thing? Are they tripping Mm -hmm. out? Oh, did you just see that, that old fat bald dude? (laughs) Right. Right. Exactly. Right. And I think my feelings are a little hurt, Jimmy. I'm not going to lie. I was talking about me. I was talking about me. (laughs) You got a full head of luxurious (laughs) hair, you bastard. (laughs) But you know what I mean? Is it, uh, could it be this interruption uh, of their world when we're stepping into it? Or are we connecting with parallel universes? I've been with people where we've recorded and we're doing an EVP sweep and we get the response in one of our voices and we're all standing there silent. Jimmy asks a question and Dave Schrader's voice answers and we're standing there looking at each other going, Mm -hmm. what the hell? So is, you know, just a jump to the left and a step to the right. Is that another universe also investigating that place? And, you know, is it Jimmy and Dave there and we're picking up each other's voices In those instances, it's, it's, I don't know. It's amazing. Is it manipulating our voices? Is it demonic because it's, it's playing and and using our voices or is it using the vibrational tone of our own resonance in order to impress itself onto it to be heard? Right. There's so many theories and that's why I I love this field is you, there's no answer. There's no one answer, no matter how much people want to pin it down. I love that we can, we can hone in on it and start to look into an audible range where these voices are being heard. But it gives us something to test and, and play with, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we've found the ghost zone. I did this uh, ghost hunt with our friend, uh, our friends, Jay and Kathleen, and mm-hmm. they have me in this frigging haunted police station in Los Angeles, <laughs> right. uh, built in like the 1920s. And, mm-hmm. and I'm alone at the uh, front desk area in the dark. And a total setup, too, man. And I was kind of freaking myself out. But I'm sitting there uh, for about 15 minutes uh, waiting for my call time, right, to go live on the air. And so I'm sitting there in the dark. And, man, there was crap going on all uh, all around me. No, just weird stuff, too. It, and, and, and so uh, it was like this setup because I could hear – like uh like a a pebble being tossed and bounced right like pe- pe- mm-hmm. in in the in the dark and i'm looking there's nothing there and there was this mannequin of all things a mannequin in a police uniform standing next to me looking at me so i was constantly <laughs> looking at this this mannequin uh but but anyway um in, in the dark there were these sounds now for the rest of the night when i'm around people and we're there was nothing Right. But when I'm sitting there in the dark, there was stuff, just things happening. Uh, and I was freaking myself out. Right. It, 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 this stuff goes on. I, I, and I'm just wondering what creates those sounds. There's nothing moving. Right. You're looking. There's nothing there. But the sounds are, are, are created somehow. Mm-hmm. It, and is it that. It is triggering a mental memory. Listen, our, our two of our most powerful senses are hearing and the sense of smell. The part of the brain that retains a sense of smell is conveniently located between your eyes and not too deep into your brain. So you could go into some place that reminds you of grandma's and all of a sudden that memory is triggered and all of a sudden you smell her cookies or her perfume or, or grandpa's cigar smoke. So is that a real memory or is it a phantom memory? They call it clear gustance when you can smell things uh, that aren't there. Um, you know, and, and music can trigger. You talked about time travel at the beginning of your show. And I'm fascinated by time travel. And I think music plays a, a, a role in that. I've How many times, Jimmy, have you been there? You're sitting in your current studio and all of a sudden – a song comes on from your youth when you were 13, 14 years old. Uh, and you can almost feel the surroundings of the location you were in when you were listening to the song. Yeah. I smell the smell it. Smell the, you smell the pot smoke at market square arena in 1977. (laughs) 
And uh, no, you're absolutely right about it. John Keel uh, talked about this a lot mm-hmm. when uh, he he had this change in mindset and and when he started to suggest that, uh, the, you know, the things that we see, the apparitions, the ghosts, the UFOs um, are real, but we are creating that reality. And I, it, and it's a fascinating concept to to go back and think about. And you know, Jacques Vallée talks about the interdimensionality of of these mm-hmm. things. And is is that how powerful? Is that how much we don't understand our brain and how powerful the mind right. can be? I think we are much more powerful than we give ourselves credit for. I believe. I believe, Jimmy. And I'll go on on the record saying this on your show. I believe we do and we can time travel, like quantum leap within our own life. I don't think I can show up uh, and knock on your door 15 minutes ago. I don't think it's that type of thing. But I I, I give people this piece of of thought. All right, we've all had that moment that's changed our life. You know, that that game when the night before we kept hearing the voice going, "You, you should not play tomorrow. You should not do this. You should not do this. And that voice is crying out to you and you ignore it and do it. And you blow out your knee and your career is over in football. And you lay there night after night thinking, damn it. If I just would have zigged instead of zagged, if I would have gone left instead of right, if I would have stayed home that day, I wouldn't have been in that accident. It wouldn't have shattered my knee. Why didn't I listen? And I often think those voices, when you reflect back on them, how loud they were, Was that us from the future every day or every few days dwelling on that, sending ourselves a message back in time? And are we creating parallel universes and and, uh, multiverse? Because sometimes we listen and sometimes we don't take that that road. We don't get in the car. We don't go down to the sporting event. We don't blow out our knee. And our life takes a different turn. So I I think that there is an aspect to that. And I've been dealing with this quantum healing and I've been talking about intention setting on my radio show and dealing with listeners because I want to do more than just interview people and talk. I want to help try to empower people to realize what we're capable of. And one thing I've told people is to think of a moment in your life you were most vulnerable. Close your eyes, take some deep cleansing breaths, put yourself into this mental space of of kind of as, as blank as you can make your mind, which is often impossible. But then once you kind of get into that, at least where you've closed most of the chatter down, I want you to start focusing on a moment in your life when things fell apart. Maybe that love left you, you know, your mom abused you, your, you know, something horrible happened. And I want you to focus on that moment. Now, I want you to imagine going and giving that version of you a hug and saying, whispering to that version, Jimmy, it's going to be okay. You're going to get through this, buddy. You're going to be fine. And and then revisit that every couple of nights and do that. Give yourself the love that you weren't getting in those moments. Maybe that's what helps us. Because if you think about it, there have been times when we've hit rock bottom and something lifts us. We want to call it an angel. We want to call it God. Maybe it's us. Maybe it's our want and desire returning to those moments and giving peace. Because you think about sometimes there are things that should have been devastating to you, but it had no effect. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's because you've spent a lifetime going back and healing that moment and giving love to that moment and giving love to yourself and forgiveness for that moment that starts that healing process. So I want to empower people to do that so that they don't feel victims of life of situations that they felt were out of their control. And and if you couldn't get the love from somebody that you wanted it from, go back and give the love to yourself. And it sounds esoteric and tree huggery, but I really believe there's something to that. In in giving yourself that gift and that mental time travel, I think you can affect who you are and affect how you receive things and accept things. And why some of us excel through much you know, I was I was beat up and abused constantly in grade school, um, picked on. I had a, a, a nervous breakdown in fourth grade, Jimmy. Fourth grade, I had a nervous breakdown. Um, had to be removed from one school, put into another because I was so uh, bullied. 
uh, you know, and I listen, why did I survive this? And I've, I tried to commit suicide. And when I was a teenager and the gun refused to fire, I, the safety was off. I checked the gun was loaded. The bullet was in the chamber. I pulled the trigger. Nothing would happen. What changed? Why me? So I, I try to look at those moments and give myself love and peace in those moments that I had the experience and, and here I am on the other side and, and I'm often the biggest gift I get in my life now is hearing that when I'm open about my, uh, my breaks, that it's helped other people realize, well, shoot, if Dave Schrader could survive this and I was in that same place, I can make it through this. All I have to do is just, you know, change this, re-examine that, give some love and peace. And, and that makes me happy. And I also realize that. In the moments I feel dark and, and I kind of give myself the Jimmy Stewart moment and it's a wonderful life of, right. um, what would life be like if I wasn't here? And then I look at all of the people's lives that I've touched who, by doing darkness radio, beget darkness events and people came together, strangers, outcasts, uh, people that, that came alone that now have best friends and sometimes, uh, found the, the love of their life and are married and have children because they came to my event because we, we bridge that chasm and brought people together. And it's not an ego stroke, but it's something to empower myself to remember how important each one of us is to the universe and that we we're here. And sometimes we don't see the bigger picture, but when we step back and look at that, and I, I want everybody to do that this time of year, when sometimes you can feel alone and dark, I want you to look at the bigger, broader picture and how many lives you've affected by your kindness. And the other day, I was in the store with my my daughter, Jimmy, and it was sweet. We were picking up some stuff for Thanksgiving, and there was a gentleman there, and he looked over at us, and he said, oh, stay away from the cookies, stay away from the cookies. And I said, right, that's the last thing we need is more poundage. And we had this little laughter, and he goes, walk by, and he goes, I hope you have a blessed Thanksgiving, and God bless you. And I said, and you too, my friend. And he stopped, and he said, I like that. You too, my friend. We've just become friends. And my daughter just stood there shocked. And I said, yes, we did. My name is Dave. And he said, my name is Pastor Rick. And we shook hands and we talked for a few more moments. And my daughter said, has that ever happened to you before? And I said, yeah, because I want, I open up and you recognize people, give them a moment of smile and courtesy and love and watch how this guy flourished in a moment. We don't know what his day was like up in that moment. You don't. And somebody stopped and wished him good luck and love and, and blessings and, he exploded with joy. And that was a great moment for all three of us. And he came over, shook my hand and had my daughter put his hand on all of ours. And he said a blessing and a prayer over us. And that was powerful, man. That was something that we shared and people can do that. You can affect and impact other people's days daily by taking a moment to smile and give a compliment and be kind in the face of all the negativity that we have in our own lives. And I want people to take that away at this time of year. If you have struggled to find things to be thankful for, become the thing other people are thankful for. It's a powerful tool. And the, yeah. uh, the dark, the, you used a great word, darkness, you know, the thing that, that cloudiness that can happen at this time of year. And just those little moments give, give people amazing clarity, right? Mm -hmm. And you can change it right then in an instant. I, um, I, I did this a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I want to share this with everybody. I do this when I'm alone. I don't do this in front of other people. I, I don't. I do it when I'm alone. But if I'm alone in line, I don't have friends with me, um, purchasing, doing whatever, whoever. It, so I did this probably 15 times uh, last week, two weeks ago at a hotel. I bought whoever was in front of me. I bought mm -hmm. what, whatever they were, whatever it was. Stop right there. I've got this. And to watch somebody change because they're by themselves, or, you know, you know, whatever, and they're focused at the moment, but uh, suddenly they smile, right at that instant, and and I only do it when I'm alone, you know, it's just my little thing, but I love to see people smile, and I do it all the time. It's this thing. I know I'm getting a dopamine jolt, right, right. <laughs> and this thing, but I love it. And, and, uh, if you can afford it, you know, if you can really, uh, uh, want to enjoy the moment of changing somebody's day, they can afford whatever they're paying for, 
But it's that act of kindness from a stranger. And, and if you don't have the money in just the kindness of being an ear or a smile or a, you know, sometimes, Jimmy, I'll tell somebody, you can see that kind of look in their eyes and I'll walk up and I'll just say, hey, I just want you to know you're a great person and you've made a big impact in other people's lives. And I don't want you to forget that. And then I just walk away and <laughs> you can awesome. see these people get this look in their eyes and then they get this smile and it cost me nothing to show some kindness and let somebody know. And you never know who might have really needed to hear that right then and there. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. And, and, and I'm so happy to hear that from you. I, I, I talk about this stuff once in a while on the show, but, uh, I, I, I keep all of that to myself and I try to do it as often as I can. There was, I posted this video a couple of years ago on, on YouTube, but, uh, I see this, this homeless guy, he's playing guitar on the side of the road. He's got a guitar with him. And, uh, and I pull up and I, uh, and I just fired up my camera and I go, okay, watch this. And, and I rolled down the older guy, you know, probably in the seventies. And, uh, and I said, play me a song. And I flipped him a five and I got the, and you never, this dude broke into song right? <laughs> and, and the video was wonderful. And, uh, and then the light, the arrow turned and I had to drive away. Uh, but uh, it was, uh, I hadn't felt that good in a long time to see somebody dance like that on the side of the road. That's awesome. It was awesome. We've, we've done for years on, on darkness radio, we've done prayer and healing requests, setting intention, helping whoa, people. Whoa. Okay. Tell That's me. my wife. That was my wife. She brought me a cup of tea, Jimmy. Don't get nervous. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> He just saw out, out, of the out, of dark, the dark. out of the dark, this face just kind of morphed <laughs> and, and, and then disappeared. <laughs> wow. I know. She's awesome. She's sneaky too. Oh, Stealthy, my man. little ninja. Oh, but, oh man, that was oh, that was rough. That was rough. You know what's what's that funny was rough. is right doing the these dark. moments of intention and sending love, sending positivity into a world where a lot of people stay away from it because they're afraid of religion. Do you know how many people I've, I've had reach out to me that go, I'm not religious, but Dave, if you could just pray for me. And I thought for the weirdest, for the longest time, Jimmy, I was like, how weird are you that you're asking me to pray for you? I don't know who you are. And then I'm like, that's what it's all about though. Because this person lowered their wall and said, I need help and I don't know where else to turn. Will you pray for me? And I've, I've been, I've, I felt weird for a long time because I felt like, who am I to pray for you? What do I, and, but I'm like, you know what, but if you've entrusted me with this and I do prayers constantly and I, you know, and I'll tell people, they're like, I don't want you to make this public. And I just put my hand on the phone and I say, Lord, I just ask that you be with our friend, Jimmy church and all of the trials and tribulations he's going through. And Lord, I just ask that you lift him and, and, and surround him in light and love and, and give wisdom to those closest to him to open their hearts and see that he's hurting. And Lord, I just ask that you help him and be with him in these days of need. And I pray this in your name. Amen. And I, I, you know, I feel like, I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know if it's going to help, but it didn't hurt. Right. It did no damage. Right. And if in those moments I can help by by sending and letting you know I've heard you, I I do my best to try to propagate that and and offer that up. And you know I I don't. I don't and again, I'm not saying this to try to be a superhero or have people be like, "Wow, that Dave Schrader is a great guy." I want you to know that's how easy it is to to change the trajectory of somebody's day, to be kind, just to offer to pray for somebody. And whether you're a believer or not, that you reach out and ask, that's that's a sign of strength. You you at a point where you don't know what more to do. Mm. And you know how many times, Jimmy, I will get a message a few days later and go, I don't know what you said, but I got a job today out of the blue. Mm. And Dave, I've needed this job more than you could ever imagine. Right. That's what I'm talking about. Let's take a break. Dave, you're going into overtime because I just saw the uh, the coffee come in from a ghost. Bring and, it. And yeah. that, man, that was awesome, man. That was, <laughs> this is Fade to Black. I am your host, Jimmy Church. I wish you could have seen what I saw. That was awesome. That was pretty cool. That's a good wife, by the way. She's amazing. Putting up with us. We'll be right back. This is Fade to Black going into overtime with Dave Schrader. Stay with me. listening.
listening to Jimmy Church and Fade to Black on the X. Hey, what up, y'all? It's your girl Vivica Fox here, and you are listening to my boy, Jimmy Church, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black, and I take Life Change Tea supplements every single day. It's what I do. Click on their banner at jimmychurchradio.com. Are you ready to read about true paranormal events? Unex Media publishes nonfiction books about UFOs, ghosts and haunted places, time anomalies, cryptid creatures, and more. Just like KUNXDB Radio, it's all about unexplained phenomena. Visit www.unxmedia.com to see our list of great book titles by Debbie Ziegelmeyer, Gene Walker, Devin Listrom, Wayne Lawrence, Bill Spicer, and yours truly, Margie Kay. That's unxmedia.com. When you take the beans from Central America with dashes of Indonesian and African mixed in and then roast it to the dark side of fade to black, you create the ultimate brew of fringe. Introducing the fade to black blend from River Moon Coffee. Yes, River Moon's darkest customized roast was created for the love of fade to black. The alchemy of masterful roasting and smoking the beans is in every sip of this full-bodied, dark java. I need my coffee dark, deep, with distinct bittersweet chocolate highlights, just like the bunker. Leaning further into the darkness of the roast is Fade to Black Blend from River Moon Coffee. Just click on the banner at jimmychurchradio.com and use the promo code F2BBLEND for 15% off of your order today. This is Billy Carson with ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. Forbidden Knowledge TV has just reached its one-year anniversary. That's right, one year. And as a show of appreciation, we are giving all new subscribers a free 30-day trial of ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. That's 30 days to binge watch thousands of movies, documentaries, conferences, workshops, lectures, yoga classes, meditation courses, and so much more. So log on to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv from your computer or mobile device or get the Forbidden Knowledge TV app on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon, iTunes, or Google Play today and use coupon code 30 days free. That's coupon code 30 days free on ForbiddenKnowledge.tv today. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now, the Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. It's not a lifestyle we chose. We were born this way. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. A true paranormal moment just happened. That was that was that was crazy. Dave Schrader. He's he's in the black. He's in the dark. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. <laughs> this is Fade to Black. We're going into overtime with Dave, and I just want to explain to everybody uh, what happened. Dave's in the dark, so his face a little fuzzy. That's why I took a picture, and I've got this grainy thing, and. And his wife steps up out of the darkness, and it was just a fuzzy face <laughs> off to the side. And uh, I jumped. I jumped. That was <laughs> unexpected, man. That was that was really, really cool, and I'm glad it was your wife um, and, and not something else coming up uh, from behind. I yes. was, was going to yell and warn. 
<laughs> that was that was really cool because she just she was an she apparition. Yep. Yeah, she faded literally uh, shredded to black. Uh, That's right. That was that was crazy. That was crazy. Um, I want to talk UFOs and 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 I want to preempt this a little bit. Uh, Dave and I were talking uh, before the show, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I took you off with the intention and, and time travel aspects. So, uh, no, no, uh, it's, it's not okay. that at all. Um, uh, but uh, Dave and I earlier today, uh, we were having a chat and, and, and I said, well, you know, uh, I saw your post about UFOs and, and Dave jumped on me. He goes, church, I'm not all about ghosts, man. I do UFOs too. <laughs> and, yep. I said, and, and, and that's the thing uh, uh, with this that I wanted to uh, get inside of your head a little bit on, on on UFOs and UAPs and what's going on today, mm-hmm. and we didn't have a chance. So now we're going into overtime. Um, just like the paranormal and the supernatural and all of the TV programming and, and pop culture uh, diving into the subject, it's the same thing with UFOs today. Uh, Dave, have you ever you've been in this for such a long time? Have you ever been at a moment in history where UFOs are being discussed uh, from the Senate floor all the way through to to science and the news and mainstream media, uh, as well as the community? It's it seems to be everywhere today. Are you surprised? Uh, you know, this is the first time in history when news talks about it in the background. You don't hear. As they're playing the X-Files theme and the tongue-in-cheek hosts of the news are like, well, there was a UFO sighting in Minneapolis today, you know, where they're so dismissive. No, they're taking it seriously. Now, I'll give you two perspectives, if you don't mind. Sure. I'm going to give you my skeptical, because I I don't think a lot of people realize I've had a lot of experiences with all aspects of the paranormal, but I'm still a skeptic. I don't believe everything. And here's the skeptic side of Dave Schrader. Right now, we are at a world in turmoil. Our Democratic and Republican lives have split. Uh, The the United States is is against each other. Everything is pissing everybody off all the time. We're at a stress point with China and with Russia, right? You've just had China just doing this supersonic, um, I don't know if you read about this, but the supersonic exploration, they've got this craft that fives, flies five times the speed of sound and has been able to effectively launch something from it that hit very near what its target was, flew, which is terrifying. Flew around the world, hypersonic speed. Right. Yeah, that's crazy. Five times the speed of sound, folks. Realize that that is powerful and dangerous. And as the the uh, political leaders and... Um, defense leaders said, this is a weapon of first strike. This is something we need to be aware of. So I think it's interesting that we're at a, at a crossroads with North Korea. We're at a crossroads with Russia. We're at a crossroads with China. Suddenly, suddenly these videos that top secret videos start getting leaked, showing craft able to go at incredible speeds and then go underwater and come up and do things that they shouldn't. And the government says, Hey, Hey, Jim, we know two things. This is not Russia. This is not China. And to me, this feels like a posturing movement from America to go, boy, it's not Russia. It's not China. We don't know what this is. To me, that's like, hey, Russia, hey, China, you see this? You realize this capability exists near our nuclear facilities. If it's not you and it's not you, who do you think this is? So I think there's this posturing. Now, does that mean that we're accepting of this, allowing it to happen near our facilities from other worldly visitors so that we can use this as a veiled threat? Or is it truly our craft and we are flexing, showing the rest of the world? You think you know what you're up against. So if you think you're getting ready to process a strike against America, just remember, we've got this going on. So part of me feels it's a lot of posturing going on and it's a veiled threat to the rest of the world. But then there's aspects of me that are like, but that doesn't explain the crash in the 1800s in Texas. It doesn't describe the crash in Roswell when learned men who know what a damn weather balloon looks like 
announced through a national press release that there is a downed saucer in Roswell, New Mexico. This doesn't deal with Rendlesham Forest. It doesn't deal with the, the Canadian crash. So there's obviously something else taking place. I don't know, I, you know, and it's so generic now to say we're, you'd be too egotistical to believe we're the only intelligent life out there. But the one drum I've been banging since we started Darkness Radio is I believe these travelers are us from the future coming back to write history properly because look at how many historic moments UFOs have been sighted at just before and right after. I wonder if it's us coming back to be a witness, an observer, not to change things, but to see what really happened at those moments when the Pope died and the World Trade Centers were attacked and, you know, giving the true information and, and reporting it back so that in the future we can tell the real history. So I think there's more of that. I believe there's other worlds, but I also think that a lot of these aliens that we may be experiencing have always been here. And what, what would, we just haven't found them all. What would freak out the world more? Aliens visiting us from other star systems or us visiting us from the future? Right. right. <laughs> I mean, uh... right. But that's that's the fascinating and exciting element of this. And again, I'm just hypothesizing and theorizing on these concepts. But it just seems to me that. If they've been there and there's there's famous Renaissance paintings, think about this. Renaissance paintings, at that time, 99% of the paintings that survived are paintings that were owned by the church. They were commissioned by the church. And if you look at the detailed receipts, every aspect of the paintings were created by the church, told to the artist right, right, what to paint. And yet... Out of the few surviving Renaissance paintings and pieces that exist, there are craft in the sky. Was that us going back to see what really happened when Christ was crucified? Was that us there at the Annunciation? Was that us there just eyewitness to these moments in history and in time? I think there's something to that. I, I really do. I I believe it's, it's us uh, monitoring this, either from another planet in the distant future uh, or from here, but just trying to figure out exactly what really happened here on Earth. Somebody's got to document it the right way, not just the winner's version of history. Well, science will have their own way of dealing with this. Mm -hmm. They will. Uh, the politicians are going to work their way through this. But the church has got a lot of explaining to do. And they have, when you think of uh, our world, seven and a half billion people, um, and a third of it are, are Catholics, right? And, mm -hmm. and we have, uh, you know, the Muslim and Islam side of things. We have the Hindu side of things. We have, uh, well, and then the you Buddhist, have. Buddhist, right, all these uh, different versions. You right? have the Asian side of things. Well, China is, is in its own situation right now when it comes to religion. But. Uh, th much of the world is focused in in one direction when it comes to religion, and those religious leaders are going to have to have some kind of answers. But uh, listen, the Pope did before the Pope. Well, I'm so bad. I'm not Roman Catholic, so I apologize. Which Pope do we have right now? It's I have not no Francis. idea. Don't, don't Benedict. Need... We have Pope Benedict. Is that okay? And Pope Francis came before him. Pope Francis, who was the short-term pope, right? He was the interim pope after John Paul II. He came forward in his short span and said, hey, it's no longer a sin to believe that there's, there's life on other planets. I thought that was interesting. So there's been a soft disclosure even from religion. And the new pope has talked about the fact of, of course, there are other life forms. And if they come here and choose to be baptized, I would baptize them. Right? I think they've been slowly aggregating us into this consciousness that there is something beyond who we are. But I believe that the the basis of most, you know, 90% of the religions that are out there is to just do good, to be good. And, and that means to our neighbors, our friends, our family, and our uh, alien pals. And I know they don't like the word alien now, uh, our, our interplanetary or multidimensional, interdimensional friends. So, uh, you know, 
it's it's interesting to me to see how this all plays out. But I I think that we are probably at a time in history when the government has realized we can't hide what's coming anymore, and we have to slowly start leaking this out so that there's not a a, a real panic. It's like people are already kind of feeling exposed to it. And I think that's why we don't see as much panic when there are shootings and there's not as much public outcries because we've become desensitized to it because so many things have happened. I think that that's kind of what they're hoping is going to happen when the aliens finally reveal themselves is that this is, you know, we're, we're going to be a little bit less chance of, of rooting and rioting and uh, rooting, looting and rioting and tearing up the streets. Well, rooting too as well. But you bring, yes, up, right. you, you bring up a really good point that in any other year, uh, and I don't think I'm wrong in this, in any other year, E.T. is real coming out of Washington, D.C., is the headline of the century. Mm-hmm. But it, 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 it the conversation is happening during uh, a worldwide pandemic and crisis where it is it's lost right it's it's totally it's 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 like a non conversation it's pretty bizarre if you think about it so well, what what a better time to do a reveal you like have to this realize they have been revealing the government has talked about this before people just haven't done anything with it there was a, a life magazine from i think it's 1952 marilyn monroe is on the cover mm-hmm. and there's a huge article inside the magazine talking about the ufos cited over the Capitol in washington well if they're there why don't they land on the white house lawn they damn near dead in 1952 uh there's there's footage of uh i think it's truman or is it eisenhower um gosh i want to say eisenhower when he's doing a press conference and as he's leaving the stage, they ask him pointedly about the the saucers. And he, he stops and goes, yes, yes, we're aware and we're dealing with that issue right now. And then he just walks off matter-of-factly. It's always been there. But people show what idiot animals we are in a lot of ways that, you know, they might just realize, hey, listen, we can't effectively stop these things. And if if our people feel that there's something that could overlord us at any time, how do we keep control of that? How do we keep control of people if we can say, hey, we can't shoot them out of the sky. We can't knock them down. And at any time, they can turn off our nuclear missile silos, which means could they set them off? I think maybe there's been a soft retraction. But now, as I said, maybe they're getting closer to it. But we've seen in media and news, major news cycles through different parts of history that they have come out and talked about this. Do you think that uh, if if something is disclosed, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever but, but some official statement or you know something lands on the White House lawn, how long does that stay in the news cycle today? Right? Depends. Do one of the Kardashians shoot up a mall? That's what I'm talking uh, about. Yes, right. exactly, it, exactly. That that's the whole thing. I think people will be interested in it, um, uh, in as much as okay. But how does that affect me today? You know, as long as the Black Friday sales are still going on and I can get a 75 inch screen TV for 500 bucks from Target, that's that's what my focus is today because I can't do anything about the aliens. You're going to have Henny Pennies running around freaking out, screaming about all this stuff anyway. Uh, you know, and then you're going to have people that are just completely non affected by it until they are knocking on our door and they're here. When I think about, and history is going to treat uh, 2020. Uh, in a very strange way, 2019, <laughs> 2020, um, because if you just go back and look at the news reels day to day, week to week for a year and a half, the craziest news broke constantly, constantly, mm-hmm. whether it was riots or protest or looting or uh, mass killings, Blackness monster weather. sightings by scientists. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this and, took place as well. People yes, forget there is yes, crazy stuff. Yes, yes. You, you want you want to go down a conspiracy well with me? I do. I did a video, a joking video, and it's uh, it's on my um, YouTube page and it's on my Twitter somewhere through there. I just it was, I think, like three months into the uh, 
COVID crisis. And I was sitting here and I looked at myself in the mirror and I had like unshaven head and face. I looked bedraggled and I thought, my God, do you look like a nut? So I made this video about the COVID crisis and aliens and, and everything. And all of a sudden I started getting messages from people. Uh, some of them are former military that said, I know that what you were doing was an attempt at humor, but I want you to know you are scarily close to the truth. And here was my thought. This is what I kind of threw out there, Jimmy. This was the basis of my idiot rant that I, again, was trying to do jokingly. Right. All right. Let's, let's accept that COVID is a weaponized virus. Let's also accept that maybe this is a uh, war of the worlds. At the same time we're releasing this, maybe they realize we can't save everyone. But if we release this virus, we know they can't survive this. We have the best chance of netting the world. And if aliens are getting ready to come here and we're beaming out, we have got a worldwide pandemic. The world is shut down. Aliens might be like, Ooh, we don't need that. Let's let's tap out right now. We'll come back when they have this in gear. I just say it. If you want to go down the crazy rabbit hole, that's a hell of a conspiracy. And the fact that I did that jokingly and got emails and messages from military former and current telling me you are eerily and scarily close to the truth that's something to consider did we war of the world's these aliens let them think there is a raging pandemic on the planet and i'm not saying there isn't one i've lost and for people that are still deniers of covid you can kiss my hairy white butt because I have lost over 14 people right. to COVID. Yes. Tim Dennis, my co-host on Darkness Radio, is in a battle right now with COVID. Um, our good friend Tom Bernard, the, the morning show host here in Minnesota, is dealing with COVID. To deny that it exists is ridiculous. And it, it affects different people differently, yes. But I have lost over 14 people to this insidious disease. So don't tell me it doesn't exist. And I've watched the ravages of it. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. And you're just trying to get my YouTube channel taken down uh, by this conversation. It, Sorry, it, buddy. I don't mean to. It, no, I'm just no. saying, I'm throwing it out there as a what if. I, I, I'm just saying aliens and, and the pandemic, they go together, man. That's like peanut butter and jelly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a possibility. The... The, the crazy part about all of this, Dave, is um, we have so many researchers and people and experiencers and contactees that that have had their own experiences and 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 speak about it. And we're trying to figure it out. But I have a very sneaky suspicion here that when the reveal happens, uh, everything that we thought is going to be wrong. Every idea, Agreed. everything that has been put on the table is is going to be wrong. I had, uh, there was this long, lengthy post today, uh, um, and I, I forget who it was, but speaking about time travel and, and things, and uh, in a very matter-of-fact way, and I almost replied, but this is my reply to those who who think they understand quantum physics or even physicists that do, or whatever, with time travel, and you understand everything. This is my point. If you said those same words to an enlightened being that is a million years more advanced than us, and you think you're going to sound intelligent to them, <laughs> that you've got it all figured out, you're going to find out that you are wrong. And they totally uh, 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 understand things in concepts that we do, we just our our brain can't handle. Our, our, and and this uh, recent post by Richard Dolan, he said, "Look, I look at my dog, and the dog's intelligence is here, and we, you know, we're smarter. You know, we're we're up here, and we like to think that. But." come into contact with somebody that's 10,000 years in front of us and their intelligence. And we think that we've got it all figured out right here. Well, think of what somebody way up here is right. And that's the only way to look at it. We don't have anything figured out. 
Nothing. And you have to, you know, I was in sales for a number of years, a big portion of my life, probably 25 years of my life in sales. And I was, it's always a learning curve. And you realize other people's problems are not your problems. And I don't mean that in a negative way, but one of the guys, I used to sell coins, uh, collectible coins and gold and silver. And one day, uh, the sales rep came over to me and he goes, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to call this woman because she's going to cry poor to me. But just tell her about this. She's going to listen to you because you're a different voice. Tell her about this set of coins because I know she wants it. And it's a complete set. We've only had two in here in 20 years. So just call her. So I call her and my heart goes out to her because immediately she starts with that, Dave, that set is $55,000. I can't, I can't just do $55,000. And I'm immediately in that mindset of, Oh God. Yeah. I'm asking $55,000 in one charge. And he's standing next to me and, uh, he mutes the phone and he goes, ask her about her house, how things are going. And I go, you know, I had a note here. Things have been going on at your house. How, how are they going? She goes, Oh, this is a great point for me to bring up to you. Cause Brian always claims he has a picture of my house up at his desk. It's his incentive. Does he have a picture in front of him? And he points to the house and I go, uh, is, I don't know. It looks like a resort. It doesn't look like a home. She goes, oh, no, that's our house. They use that for dirty dancing. Huh. They used it, their their house, as the resort in dirty dancing. And I'm like, what? And she goes, yeah, we're really struggling right now. We just had to pave over one of our Olympics, one of our Olympic-sized pools to put in a tennis court because our daughter is training for the Olympics. And that cost us blah, 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 blah. And 55 grand right now. And I said, well, how about if we split it over three credit cards? Oh, okay. I can do that. Suddenly her problems and my problems were two different things. You, you start to get perspective that, that everybody's got their lot in life and what you think, like the aliens, what we think we know, what they're really dealing with, what they are might be two totally different things. And you're right. The rectification is going to come at some point, right? And we're going to see how this all aligns and I think that the government has painted themselves in a corner that they may eventually admit it, but they'll do it recently. Remember, the footage that they've officially allowed out is only like 10 years old. So I think if they acknowledge it, they're going to say, oh, we believe now, but really only in the last 10 years. Right. They're not going to go back to Roswell because then they have painted themselves in a corner. Well, if you've been lying to us for 65, 75, 85 years, what else do you know? Right. And, and that's and, the problem. They have to... Right. They have to, uh, I've got uh, 15 seconds. They just have to rip the Band-Aid off. At one point, you just have to just take what's coming. That's it. That, and, and the decision just has to be made. Dave, thank you so much, my friend. Uh, my pleasure, buddy. Uh, this Friday, of course, uh, the Shock Doc, uh, Demon in the White House. And uh, what else is going on? And when are you going to, uh, when do you release new podcast? Uh, just keep checking up darknessradio.com, darknessevents.com. I'm going to be out at the Las Vegas Para Unity Conference the 9th through the 11th at the MGM Grand in uh, Vegas. You can check it all out at darknessevents.com and see where I'm going to be throughout the rest of the year. Jimmy, always a pleasure, man. Thanks for having me on. Always a pleasure. And, of course, we're going to start our new radio show right here on the UnX Network, too, as well. Let's we made it. that announcement tonight. Dave, thank you so much, my friend. I'm going to roll straight into credits. Uh, before we get cut off. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving to you and the family, Dave. Thank you so much. What a great conversation tonight with Dave. I expected all of that. And thank you, Dave, for hanging in for some overtime. Fade to Black is produced by Hill J. Palm, Renee, Dennis, and Kevin. Announcers are Steve Harder, Gene Vitoa, Mark D. Kobar. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Spaceboy. Spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network, and this broadcast is only copyrighted 2021 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I'll be right back here after dinner, taking your phone calls all night long for a very special thanksgiving fader night until then i want everybody to be safe it's time to fade to black